The Protector Chapter 101 Levi looked at everyone and said, Brian, Victoria, Lionel, Tammy, Russell, Patrick, Holly, Kit, Misty, and Rick. Look at me, all of you. Everyone's hearts were in their throats when their names were called. They knew what was going on. It's like Hades and his Furies sentencing. Punishments to us. All of them had no other choice but to obey Levi's order. Did you murder Morris Atkinson? Levi asked them. No. Someone was about to deny it. Then his eyes met with Levi's unforgiving gaze. Everyone nodded immediately. Admitting our crime is a wiser choice now. All of you are going to repent by kneeling in front of Morris's grave for three days and three nights. Levi commanded harshly. Garfield Perkins waved his hand. Soldiers brought Rick and the others forcefully to Morris's grave. Levi looked at Morris's tomb and said with a smile, Morris, I've brought all the accomplices who conspired your death to repent in front of you. I will send every one of them to accompany you soon. Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson were tear stricken. Levi's effort to avenge Morris touched them. Levi looked at the other members of the Garrison family. Brian and Victoria, do you still remember how you broke my legs that night? Levi grinned at them menacingly. The couple was scared out of their wits. Tap tap tap. The scariest part was Levi's continuous advancement in their direction. Brian and Victoria wanted to back away from him, but they had nowhere to. Escape because of the guns pointed at the back of their heads. Finally, Levi came to a halt in front of them. He took the baseball bat from Brian's hand and sized up the stick. Is this the bat you used to break my legs six years ago? I suppose you kept it all this while so you can cripple me again. Thump thump thump. Both of them slammed their foreheads against the ground to beg for Levi's. Forgiveness as an ominous feeling crept into their hearts. Please forgive us. Levi. We will not repeat our mistake. Just think of us as your servants from. Now on. Levi sneered while tapping the baseball bat. But you did not show me any. Mercy six years ago. That was because we were. Bam. Arg. Levi smashed Brian's knee with the bat as soon as he tried to explain. Himself. Brian howled in pain as his bones shattered. This is the treatment I received from you in the past. Bam. Arg. Levi did not spare any of Brian's limbs. The latter rolled on the floor. Screaming hysterically in agony. Then Levi looked at Victoria. Don't touch me. I'm just a woman. Victoria shielded herself with her hands. But you are an evil woman. Bam. Levi broke Victoria's hands and legs as well. Then he tossed the disabled couple at the side of Morris's grave to repent for their sins. They are related to that matter, after all. Levi thought to himself as he shifted his gaze onto Joseph Garrison and his foster parents. Joseph and the others lowered their heads fearfully. I never thought we would end up in this situation. Levi said in a self-deprecating manner. I can declare that I am innocent. I've worked hard for this family since I was young to repay all of you. Who was the person to bring fame and wealth to the Garrison family in the past? That person was me. Did I not prove my sincerity by treating all of you with kindness? Levi questioned. The Protector Chapter 102 You're absolutely right, Levi. Joseph and the others said in a hurry. I will not harm you because you used to be my grandpa and my foster. Parents. I am not an insensible person, but I will deprive the Garrison family. Of all possessions, especially my Levi group. I will also sever all ties with you from this moment onwards. Your fates will. Have nothing to do with me from now on. Also, don't you dare try to do anything by quoting my name. Otherwise, 
all of you will face certain death. Levi's judgment was simple enough to understand. The Garrison family was doomed. They were one of the wealthiest families in Northampton, but Levi now turned them into an ordinary family without any power or money. That punishment was worse than death in their opinion. Joseph and his family's years of effort turned into dust with a single order. From Levi, the Garrison family's assets, worth up to billions, were taken away. From them, leaving them with absolutely nothing. That sudden and drastic change was unacceptable and surreal to the Garrisons. Levi looked at Jack Smith and the other underworld figures. He sneered. All of you do not have to die. But you disrupted the peace at Morris's grave. So, you will kneel before him for one day and one night. Yes. Yes. Everyone kneel. All the thugs followed Jack Smith's order and knelt. We will also turn this place into a proper cemetery dedicated to Mr. Morris. Atkinson after this, sir. Jack Smith offered. Levi did not reject his proposal. Finally, Levi addressed the 100,000 soldiers. Thank you for your hard work, brothers. God of war. God of war. God of war. The battle without any casualties ended with the war cry. Zoe did not know how long had passed, but she had cried her eyes out and fainted three times. Aaron called Harry to ask about the situation. Harry said, I received an update saying the confrontation has ended. But no. One exited the place or saw Levi anywhere. So I suppose he's dead. Harry was concerned about Zoe's condition because she was still handling that huge project. How's Zoe? Zoe passed out for the third time, father. Aaron answered helplessly. Harry rebuked angrily, what are you doing? Is that how you console her? Try. Harder. Levi's death is a favorable outcome. In this way, Zoe can marry. Another person. If Samuel's brothers are not good enough, then we will look. For a better candidate. Bear this in mind. The Lopez family will thrive once. Levi is out of the way. Harry almost laughed out loud on the other end of the phone. I can finally exploit Zoe and her family to my heart's content with Levi gone. Zoe gradually regained her consciousness after some time. She questioned her parents while looking at them. What's the situation? Now? How's Levi? Aaron sighed. To be honest. I do not want to tell you this. What's going on, Dad? Hurry up and tell me. Zoe grabbed Aaron's arm. I received an update from your grandpa. Levi is dead. Zoe slumped onto the floor and shrieked hysterically after listening to her. Father. Levi. The Protector Chapter 103 Meanwhile, Rick Garrison knelt before Levi. Rick told Levi he had something to inform him when Levi was about to leave. What's the matter? Spit it out. Mr. No, that's not right. Sir. Do you really think we, the Garrison family, were capable of pulling off the feat six years ago by ourselves, sir? Rick. Asked. Levi narrowed his eyes in response. He seemed to have noticed the problem. 2. Now that I think about this, there are a lot of details that don't quite add up. For example, the Garrison family should not have been able to take control of Levi Group so easily. Moreover, there must be someone who orchestrated the multiple charges against me and my imprisonment. I do not believe the Garrison family to be so competent. There is someone else. Supporting them. Rick smiled. We harbored the intention for a long time but did not have the capabilities to execute the plan. But someone suddenly appeared and provided our family with assistance amidst our hesitation. Who is that person? Levi asked coldly. Oswald Rogers. 
You and Ms. Zoe's schoolmate in the past, sir. Rick. Revealed that person's identity. Levi took a deep breath at the mention of Oswald Rogers. Oswald was in the same high school as Zoe and me. He was also Zoe's classmate. We competed for Zoe's favor in the past, and I came out as the winner. But Oswald did not give up pursuing Zoe until our wedding day. Oswald's family background is more than just impressive. The Rogers family's net worth is easily over billions with properties all over the globe. They are the true top-tiered family in Northampton, at least ten times more influential than the Garrison family. Every decision they make can alter the economic standing of this city. If Oswald Rogers is the mastermind, then everything makes sense. He does have the power to place me behind bars effortlessly. Rick continued. Oswald Rogers was angry because of your marriage to M.S. Zoe. So he planned everything with the goal to destroy you. Levi finally understood why the Garrison family decided to execute the plan. On his wedding day. This is all because of Oswald Rogers. Well, it is not. Surprising for him to get mad, knowing the love of his life was getting. Married to another man. Rick shook his head in despair. Oswald would not have gotten the opportunity if we did not harbor ill intent in the first place. Ultimately, this is still the Garrison family's fault. Levi glared at him. Glad you know. Zoe had no other choice but to accept the reality because Levi did not return home after she waited for him for the whole day. Harry Lopez even hosted a dinner banquet to celebrate the joyous occasion. Zoe was brought to the banquet venue in a daze by her parents. We are having this banquet tonight for very simple reasons. The first being the reinstatement of Zoe Lopez as part of the family. The second reason is to celebrate Zoe's escape from her disastrous marriage. Lastly, the Lopez family will develop the West City project alongside Zoe from now on. So, cheers everybody. Harry announced with his wine glass raised. Everyone else in the family raised their glasses as well, with delightful smiles. On their faces. The Lopez family was exhilarated as if they were hosting a New Year's. Celebration. Aaron and Caitlin forced themselves to join in the fun. Zoe was the only person who stood out like a sore thumb during the banquet due to her lifeless condition. Harry gazed at Zoe. Now that Levi is gone, you should consider remarrying. Zoe. There are plenty of excellent candidates in Northampton to choose. From. You will meet a better person soon. Who dares to ask my wife to marry another man? A cold, harsh voice was. Heard all of a sudden. Everyone turned to look at the door. Levi was standing at the entrance, alive and well. Ellie Levi Garrison. Harry staggered as he nearly collapsed onto the floor. Are you a man or a ghost? Samuel was close to hiding under the table out. Of fear. Everyone was caught in perplexity and terror because a supposedly dead person had returned. The Protector Chapter 104 Do I look like a ghost? Levi entered the venue and walked up to Samuel. While the others gasped frightfully. Samuel touched Levi's arm with his trembling hand. Then he said in surprise. You're warm. You're still alive. But that's not possible. Levi sneered. So you wanted me to die? Ah? Of course not. Samuel was panting heavily. Levi. Zoe rushed over to him and wrapped her arms around him tightly. Levi hugged her as well. I'm sorry to have made you worried. My bad. Harry was confused. This is impossible. The Garrison family and Jack Smith wouldn't have spared your life. That's right. How can you stay alive when the Garrison family is targeting you? This is not possible. Everyone added. Even Zoe was looking at Levi curiously. They're right. 
How did you resolve the situation earlier? Levi tousled her hair and smiled. I told you I can handle this matter. A thought popped into Zoe's mind. I saw a lot of soldiers nearby Morris's grave just now. Is this related to them? Levi answered, You're right. The soldiers were having a military practice. Near that area in Northampton. They dealt with the garrison family. Because of their unwelcoming behavior. Luckily, I'm acquainted with the Azure Dragon. So he punished the garrison family heavily on my behalf after knowing the whole story and promised to return Levi Group to me. Everyone in the Lopez family was dumbfounded after listening to Levi's explanation. They looked at him incredulously. Levi Group will be his possession again? Does that mean he will have a net worth of billions? So he will regain his former glory. Levi, I. Harry was about to bootlick Levi when the latter left the banquet with Zoe. Every member of the Lopez family chased after them. Harry shouted from behind, Levi Garrison will forever be our family's pride. We must follow them. Hurry up. But they failed to catch up with Levi and Zoe. Levi brought Zoe to the revolving restaurant in Northampton City Center to celebrate the success that night. Harry made no fewer than 20 calls to Zoe, while the other members of the family visited Aaron's house. They were eager to butter Levi up. In the end, Levi was annoyed by their relentless pestering. So he said, I'll go to Levi Group to take over the business tomorrow with Zoe. Come to the company tomorrow if you have something to say. Everyone from the Lopez family finally stopped badgering them. But they could not sleep that night due to their excitement. Early in the morning the next day, everyone from the Lopez family followed Levi and Zoe to Levi Group. Even Harry Lopez tagged along. Not one of them wanted to miss that glorious moment. Members of the Lopez family were filled with exhilaration as they gazed at Levi Group's skyscraper, including Zoe. Levi went to the receptionist and stated his aim for his visit. My name is Levi Garrison, and I am here to take over Levi Group today. The receptionist looked at Levi in a daze. Are you crazy? You're the first person to come here with such a ridiculous request. Zoe retorted immediately, the Garrison family stepped down from Levi Group's management, didn't they? They did but most of the board members are still present. Moreover, they already bought Levi Group's shares which were under the Garrison family's possession, explained the receptionist. Zoe was confused. What do you mean? Are you not aware of the parent company behind Levi Group? They receptionist asked. Levi gained revelation instantaneously. The Rogers family. They are the Holding company of Levi Group. That means the Garrison family never had control of Levi Group, to begin with. This company belongs to the Rogers family. The Protector Chapter 105 Harry and the others questioned, what's going on? Melanie checked Levi Group's status on the internet with her mobile phone. And explained. Sky Incorporated is the majority shareholder of Levi Group. This company completely belongs to Sky Incorporated after the garrison. Family gave up their shares. Sky Incorporated is the holding company owned by the prestigious Rogers. Family, right? Henry asked. Harry frowned. He asked the receptionist with all seriousness, that means. Levi Group has always belonged to the Rogers family and Levi Garrison is not at all related to this company. She nodded. That's right. The Rogers family took control of Levi Group six years ago. I don't know how all of you found the courage to come here. Demanding to take over the company when Levi Garrison is just a nobody. Here. At that moment, a group of people ushered the CEO of Levi Group, Howard Corbin into the company. 
Oswald Rogers was the chairman of Levi Group, while his trusted aide, Howard, was the chief executive officer. Howard Corbin had a busy night as well. I received the news of the confrontation between the Garrison family and Levi Garrison last night. Surprisingly, they stumbled into the God of War amidst their argument while the soldiers were having a military practice nearby. The Garrison family invoked the God of War's wrath and suffered greatly. They had to give up all their family's assets, so I spent the entire night purchasing the shares under their possession. Oswald even told me the Garrison family is a bunch of fools to have infuriated the God of War. He was also amazed by Levi's unbelievable fortune to have escaped the predicament by receiving the God of War's help. But Oswald and Howard did not know that the God of War was actually Levi. Howard saw Levi and the others gathering in the lobby as soon as he entered the company building. He walked up to the crowd with a frown. What's the matter? The receptionist answered, Mr. Corbin, these people said that they are here to take control of the company. I suppose they are here to stir up trouble. Howard eyed Levi and Zoe as he listened to the receptionist. He sneered. Oh? So it is Levi Garrison in the flesh. Howard recognized Levi because he participated in the scheme six years ago. Are you part of the Rogers family? Levi asked mockingly. That's right. You sure move quick, coming here to take over the company. Right after the Garrison family's downfall. But let me tell you now. Levi Group. Is no longer related to you, Levi Garrison. We are now the majority. Shareholder of Levi Group, so this company is ours legally. Howard raised. His voice. Look at this group of clowns. Do you think you can become rich? Instantaneously by taking over Levi Group? Idiots. Ha ha ha, the people. Surrounding them were laughing hysterically at Levi and the Lopez family. Harry, Aaron, and the others lowered their heads. This is so shameful. It's like. We are a bunch of country bumpkins. How can the Lopez family continue to. Stay in Northampton if this incident spreads around? It's time for all of you to leave. Levi Group does not welcome you. Take. Them away, guards. Multiple security guards closed in on Levi and the others after receiving the order from Howard. Levi and the rest of the Lopez family were chased out of the building by the security guards in the end. Know your place, you poor people. The guard rebuked them. Disgrace. This is the worst humiliation the Lopez family has ever suffered. There will be no way for us to recover from this insult. Everyone in North Hampton will laugh at us from now on. Harry Lopez thought to himself. Levi grimaced in silence. I did not deal with the situation right away because I want to toy with the Rogers family further. All of you will suffer in despair. Soon. Just you wait, Oswald Rogers. The sheer humiliation was unbearable to the Lopez family after being thrown out from Levi Group. All of them stared at Levi hatefully. The Protector Chapter 106 We tried so hard to please him last night because we thought he's wealthy. But he is just a poor loser with nothing on him. Not only did we gain nothing, but we also lost our family's dignity because of him. Levi Garrison do you care to explain yourself? How dare you come here? Without grasping the situation properly? I want to strangle you to death so. Badly right now. Harry Lopez exploded with rage. Samuel scolded Levi angrily, are you hallucinating by any chance? This. Company has got nothing to do with you. Henry was stomping his feet furiously. Great. You've successfully ruined the Lopez family's good name. Are you happy now? Aaron and Caitlin were sobbing. You are truly a good-for-nothing piece of shit. Why are we still related to you? When will you stop daydreaming and be 
a down-to-earth person? We must have committed unforgivable crimes in our past lives to deserve an awful son-in-law like you. How we hope we can sever all ties with you. Zoe could not hide her disappointment either. Levi has crossed a line by doing this. He brought shame to the entire family. The Lopez family is well known throughout Northampton, yet we were chased out by the security guards earlier. This is all his fault. Zoe glowered at Levi. How many times have I told you that you should be honest, stay calm, and stop indulging in your daydreams? You've truly disappointed me this time. Not only did you fail to make us proud, but you also brought dishonor to the Lopez family. But let's forget about this. I believe in your capabilities, so let's work hard together in the future. Zoe consoled Levi in the end. This is why I am infatuated with Zoe. She believes in me no matter how disappointed she is with me. Having a woman who places her faith in one under all circumstances is such a blessing. Okay. I will listen to you from now. On. Levi smiled. But you don't have to worry because I will take back Levi. Group sooner or later. Stop that bullshit. I can hardly contain my urge to slap you. Samuel and. Sean were consumed by rage. Harry warned his son again. You better monitor your son-in-law well, Aaron. The Lopez family is not related to him in the future. So don't you dare cause any trouble for us. Then they left resentfully. Aaron and Caitlin glared at Levi. Useless idiot. You're not better than a piece of trash. Both of them left as well after they spoke. Zoe comforted Levi. They are only saying that because they are mad. Don't take their words to heart. I am a little angry at you after what happened to Levi smiled indifferently. It's okay. It's all water under the bridge now. A gold color, custom-ordered Rolls-Royce arrived at Levi Group's entrance. Shortly after Levi and Zoe departed, Howard Corbin and the other executives hurriedly went to welcome the person. Howard even took the initiative to open the car door. A man wearing a white suit got out of the car. His entire outfit was custom-made by the best tailor from abroad. That man adjusted his gold-rimmed spectacles and asked with a smile. Levi. And Zoe left. That man was Oswald Rogers. They left, Mr. Rogers. Levi was as disgraced as a dog. Howard reported. Cheerfully. Oswald sneered. I will begin my plan to target Levi and Zoe soon. Levi will meet the same fate as Morris Atkinson, while I will have Zoe sleep with me on her own accord and please me with her body. The Protector Chapter 107 April 19, 2021 by Chapter Novel Howard and the other subordinates put on a menacing smile. No one has ever escaped a terrible fate after being targeted by Mr. Rogers. Any man who offends him is either dead or crippled. He has never failed to obtain any girl he's interested in either. This is the first time Mr. Rogers is so fixated on targeting someone. Levi Garrison and Zoe. Lopez will end up with a worse outcome than six years ago, and there will be no way for them to escape this time. Howard said. Levi is extremely lucky recently, Mr. Rogers. He encountered the Azure Dragon a few times and even met with the God of War yesterday. Jealousy glinted in Oswald's eyes. You're right. He is lucky. I envy his luck to get to meet with the God of War. He stumbled into the man even the richest. Men in the entire Northampton like us have never met once. However, Levi also met with me. Our meeting will be the start of his endless nightmares. That embarrassing incident involving the Lopez family spread like wildfire as they expected. Everyone in the family could no longer hold their heads high. Aaron and Caitlin were also ridiculed by their colleagues. 
Zoe did not escape a similar fate. Her friends were deliberately mocking her. As well. This is all Levi's fault. Luckily, we are no longer staying with my parents. Otherwise, there will be no end to the insults directed at him. Nonetheless, I am glad that Levi is still alive despite our current circumstances. Levi left the house early in the morning that day, while Zoe went to work as usual. He visited Kieran's training base. All 80 mercenaries hired by Rick Garrison the other day were captured by Kieran and brought to the training base because Levi had a task for those people. He wanted to keep the mercenaries by his side because it was a hassle for him to transfer men from the Northampton war zone to do his bidding all the time. Levi was preparing for the future troubles he had to face. James and the other mercenaries were beyond shocked to receive the offer to become the god of war's bodyguards. We are all familiar with the god of war's legendary achievements and title. He is our motivation to survive in every war zone. This once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to serve him will bring honor to our family. I've assigned these people to serve you, sir. I also selected a few outstanding soldiers from the few war zones nearby to form a special operations regiment. So I will need your consent by signing on this order. Kieran said with a smile. Kieran was a man who was addicted to training soldiers into elite members of the special troop during his leisure time. Hand the papers to me. I'll sign it. By the way, will you attend our first practice, sir? The newbies can admire you at that time. Okay. Levi agreed. Then he left after he was done assigning the tasks to the mercenaries. Levi saw Abigail in the house when he returned to the Bayview Garden. Don't you have class today? Levi asked in surprise. There's no point attending those classes because I am already familiar with the content. I am very smart, after all. Abigail sipped on her yogurt drink. While pacing around the living room in her shorts. Oh. My parents will visit Northampton tomorrow. I will treat my aunt and the others to a meal as well. You must join us, Levi. Abigail said cheerfully. Okay. I heard Caitlin came from an influential family. She disregarded the black family's opposition and married Aaron of her own accord. Her action infuriated them. I've never seen Abigail previously because Caitlin's family never attended my wedding six years ago. The Protector Chapter 108 Aaron asked Levi and Zoe to visit his house that night. He glared at Levi fiercely. We'll forget about the incident that happened yesterday morning, but you better don't embarrass us tomorrow. I'll kick you out without any hesitation if you dare to act shamelessly. Zoe was caught in perplexity. What's happening tomorrow, Dad? Levi smiled. Abigail's parents are visiting tomorrow. Oh? Do you already know? I suppose Abigail told you? He's right. They are. Visiting Northampton tomorrow, and they will treat our family to dinner. Aaron elaborated. Caitlin said solemnly, Zoe, you are aware of the black family's influence. Right? I have to remind you in advance not to commit any error tomorrow. Because of your uncle's significant social status. All right, Mom. Zoe nodded. Levi asked nonchalantly, why are you so nervous? We are just having a meal together. Of course we are nervous. Abigail's parents are no ordinary people. Aaron looked at Levi and Zoe. Do you know why Abigail takes her mother's surname? That's because her mother, Pamela Rogers, is a member of the ultra-wealthy family in Northampton, the Rogers family. They requested for Abigail to take her mother's surname. I see. No wonder Abigail's surname is Rogers. Zoe was informed of that matter for the first time. 
Levi's eyes gleamed pensively. So, they are related to Oswald Rogers and his family. Are you aware of the importance of this situation now? Pamela is the Rogers family's representative. Levi and Zoe were only allowed to leave after Aaron nagged them. Relentlessly to be mindful and stay vigilant when meeting Abigail's parents. The next day, Abigail's parents, Bailey Black and Pamela Rogers, visited Northampton. They stayed in the Marriott Hotel and hosted the dinner. Gathering at the same venue. A normal room in the Marriott Hotel cost a few thousand per night, while the presidential suite was priced at no less than 80,000. It was a must for Bailey Black and Pamela Rogers to stay in the presidential suite of a five-star hotel whenever they went on a trip. Aaron and Caitlin were astounded when they learned of the price because the night's stay was equivalent to three times of Caitlin's monthly salary. Four people were seated inside the VIP private room on the second floor of the hotel when Levi and the others arrived. There was another man inside the room aside from Abigail and her parents. Levi could sense Abigail's gloom instantaneously. She hurried over toward the door when she saw them. You're finally here. Levi, Bailey, Pamela, and the unknown man stood up simultaneously. Bailey Black was calm, collected, and dignified. Pamela, on the other hand, was covered in lavish clothing and accessories. She gave off the temperament of a member of the royalty. Besides, she seemed radiant like a famous celebrity because of her great effort in taking care of her body. That unknown man was tall and burly, with muscles that rippled all over his body. Levi knew that man was a soldier with a single glance. Aaron and his family sat around the table warily after a warm greeting. Between two parties. Abigail sat in between Levi and Zoe as if she was hiding from that man. Aaron did not dare to speak in the presence of Pamela Rogers. Caitlin looked at that unknown man and asked, Who is this, Pamela? Pamela answered delightfully, Caitlin, this boy is the son of your brother's close friend. His name is Will Ramos, and he is an outstanding child. He is the first ranking soldier in his camp so he is selected to participate in the private training camp organized by the King of War, Kieran. Will will be the upcoming military leader in the future. The Protector Chapter 109 Levi thought to himself. So, he's one of the soldiers transferred here by Kieran? I guess he told everyone about the selection because that is indeed a significant achievement. Will Ramos straightened his back and puffed out his chest proudly. He greeted Caitlin and her family politely when Pamela mentioned his name. Lust glinted in his eyes as he glanced at Zoe. Beauty sure runs in there. Family. Do not hesitate to ask me for help in the future, should you require any. Assistance. I will certainly have the capabilities to settle your troubles, Will. Said to Aaron, Caitlin, and Zoe. Bailey Black nodded in satisfaction. This boy is highly competent. I am sure. He will become one of the highest ranked soldiers in near future. Pamela smiled. That's for sure. I've never misjudged anyone. He will serve. The King of War, Kieran, since he is selected to take part in the Special Operations Regiment Training Camp. Are you aware of Kieran's great name? Aaron replied, Kieran is the trusted aide of the Commander-in-Chief for the Nine War Zonies, God of War. That's right. I guess you and your family aren't completely ignorant. Will will soon serve the God of War. Can you imagine the bright future that awaits him? Pamela asked. Aaron and Caitlin glared at Levi. Then they shook their heads and sighed. His future must be promising. Why is our son-in-law so useless when compared to others? I can't say the same for your son-in-law. Bailey sneered. Aaron's face turned sour. You're right. He's just a nobody. Dad, uncle, that's not true. My brother-in-law is amazing. 
Abigail defended. Levi while looking at him admiringly. Anger surged within Will Ramos at that sight. I've always liked Abigail, and... I've now received recognition from Pamela Rogers herself. But Abigail still... Never smiles at me or shows any interest in me. So why is she looking up to... This criminal who is just recently released from jail? This is outrageous. Don't be fooled by him, Abigail. His achievements six years ago were barely acceptable. But now, he's just a piece of human trash, Bailey said. Unmercifully. That's right. You're absolutely right. Levi is nothing compared to Will. Aaron. And Caitlin agreed with Bailey. Abigail was about to speak further, but Levi held her hand to stop her. Will noticed the intimate interaction of Abigail and Levi under the table. He gritted his teeth angrily and clenched his fists. But then he said with a smile. After regaining his composure. The day after tomorrow will be the first day. Of our training camp. I want to invite both of you to the ceremony, Mr. Black. And MDM. Rogers. Perhaps we can get acquainted with the King of War, Kieran. If we're lucky. Kieran allowed the soldiers to bring their families along to the opening. Ceremony of the training camp. Will wanted to bring his parents initially, but. He changed his mind on the spot and offered the chance to Bailey and. Pamela. I heard the news of the God of War's participation in this ceremony as well. Although we will not get the opportunity to get acquainted with him, being able to admire him from afar in person is already a once-in-a-lifetime blessing. Will was filled in anticipation for the day to arrive. I idolized the God of War and the Five Kings of War serving him since I became a soldier. It is my biggest wish to meet them in person. So there is no way I can stay calm knowing I can finally fulfill this greatest wish of my life soon. What? Really? Not only can we meet with the King of War, Kirin, but we can also see Protector of Arudaya, the God of War in person. Pamela and Bailey almost leap in excitement. That's right. Each soldier is allowed to bring three people to the ceremony, so Abigail should tag along too. Will deliberately glanced at Abigail. The Protector Chapter 110 Okay. We are attending the ceremony for sure. This is awesome. What if I am lucky enough to become acquainted with the God of War? I will be treated with respect even in the Rogers family if that happens. Pamela began to imagine a better life in her mind. We are so jealous of you. This kind of opportunity will never be available to us even after many lifetimes. Aaron and Caitlin envied Abigail and her parents because they wanted to meet with those legendary figures as well. Zoe, on the other hand, was unfazed. Pamela said arrogantly, Well, we can't help you with that, Caitlin. This ceremony is not available to everyone, after all. However, Levi voiced out nonchalantly all of a sudden. It's just an opening. Ceremony for a training camp. We can attend whenever we want. Dreadful silence filled the room as they looked at Levi after he spoke. Even Zoe frowned at him. He's not able to change his bad habit of talking. Big even now. Will burst out with laughter. Ha ha ha, what did you say? You can attend. Whenever you want. What a joke. Do you know the qualifications required to be shortlisted for this training camp? Only the top ten most outstanding soldiers from each war zone are selected. Who are you to join the ceremony? Anyway, Mr. Nobody. Levi chuckled. I can go because someone invited me. He even told me the ceremony would not proceed without me. Bailey and Pamela's faces were contorted with rage as they glowered at Levi. Aaron and Caitlin grimaced while Zoe lowered her head, desperate to find a place to hide. He's getting more and more ridiculous. 
the opening ceremony. Cannot proceed without him? I do not expect anyone to believe him because... Even I can't bring myself to listen to him. Abigail thought Levi was boasting too much as well. She was embarrassed by... His brazenness too. Will laughed out loud. You're hilarious. The ceremony cannot proceed. Without you? Do you think you're the king of war, Kieran, or the god of war? Pamela gazed at Caitlin and Aaron solemnly. I am worried about the well-being of your family. This is unacceptable. Aaron exploded with rage. What did I tell you last night? Did I not ask you to? Behave and stop daydreaming? Are you disregarding my words now? We shouldn't have brought you here in the first place. You bring nothing but... Shame to our family. Caitlin glared at Levi fiercely. Levi sneered. You can say all you want, but I will attend the ceremony. Anyway. Bam. Bailey slammed on the table furiously. Is this how your son-in-law behaves? Aaron? He's not respecting us at all. Pamela was upset as well. We don't have to finish this dinner if your son-in-law is so capable. I'm afraid we are too lowly to share a table with your family's high and mighty status. Let's go. We're not staying here any longer. No one expected the sudden turn of events as the dinner ended disastrously. Aaron and Caitlin were startled. We wanted to seize this opportunity to mend my relationship with the Black family with their help. But Levi had to ruin everything as always. Colors drained from their faces. Please console your parents, Abigail. This is all our fault. We will apologize to them personally after your parents' anger. Subside. The couple placed their hopes on Abigail. Okay. Leave it to me. Abigail glanced at Levi with complicated emotions in her eyes. Will leaned against the door and jeered at Levi. I hope to see you at the opening ceremony the day after tomorrow. The Protector Chapter 111 Will left the room cockily, leaving Aaron and his family to look at one another. Helplessly. Caitlin said despondently, the Rogers family and the Black family are both powerful families with strict household regulations. They do not condone this type of behavior. So I cannot blame them for being mad. Aaron fixated his hateful stare on Levi as he roared, I can't wait to strangle you to death with my own hands one day. He was about to slap Levi when Zoe stopped her father. Calm down. We'll just apologize to uncle and aunt another day. Zoe comforted her parents. Calm down. He tainted our reputations in front of the Black family and the Rogers family. What are you trying to do, Levi Garrison? Do you want to drive us to our deaths before you change that shitty attitude of yours? Caitlin pointed at Levi as she rebuked him. Levi said helplessly, Father, Mother, I really do have to attend the opening ceremony. That's not the issue here. You brought shame to our family and offended. Bailey and Pamela. So what if you attend the ceremony? That doesn't change. Anything. You're still a piece of human trash. Aaron yelled angrily. Caitlin could not contain her wrath too. Perhaps you can participate in the ceremony because you once stumbled into the god of war due to sheer luck. But he's not acquainted with you at the end of the day. You have nothing to back up your big words as always. Zoe immediately dragged Levi away. They will force us to get a divorce if we stay there any longer. The next day, Abigail contacted Aaron in the afternoon and told him her parents had calmed down. Abigail's parents were willing to accept their apology if they bring Levi along and make him ask for their forgiveness. Sincerely. But they wanted to deal with Aaron and his family only after the opening ceremony ended. Aaron ordered Levi to beg for Bailey and Pamela's forgiveness in person. Otherwise, he would have to divorce Zoe. 
Levi agreed to his request. The opening ceremony for Kiran's Special Operations Regiment occurred the next day. Kiran contacted Levi early in the morning, informing the latter that he would be picking him up. Levi asked Aaron, Caitlin, and Zoe if they wanted to tag along with him to the opening ceremony, but they scolded him instead. Zoe chided him and told him not to interrupt her during her office hours. Meanwhile, the army sent a car to pick Will up. Abigail and her family got into the car together with him. Pamela could not hide her exhilaration for having the opportunity to sit in an army vehicle despite her extraordinary family background. The soldier driving the car said cheerfully, You guys are so lucky, Will. They. King of War, Kieran, will be instructing all of you personally. Most importantly. The God of War wants to give a motivational speech to all of you too. Will was fidgeting in his seat as he could barely contain his excitement to meet with his idol, the God of War. You're right. I can't believe I am blessed. With this good fortune. Will smiled in embarrassment. That's because of your remarkable excellence. They wouldn't have selected. You otherwise. Pamela complimented him. The soldier driving the car nodded in agreement. She's right. You must be. An elite soldier to qualify for the training camp. Will straightened his back proudly as they flattered him. But disappointment. Rose within him when he turned to look at Abigail. Abigail was not gazing at Will with admiration as he thought she should be. In contrast, she was acting indifferently. The car entered the military zone after some time. They finally arrived at the training base after another hour. All of them were impressed by the sight of soldiers equipped with actual weapons standing guard all over the place. The participants for the training camp and their families were arranged to sit in a large, vacated area. A total of 100 participants were selected to join the training camp. Everyone was looking around enthusiastically as if it was their first day of enlistment in the Army. The Protector Chapter 112 Someone whispered, it's better to keep quiet in this place to prevent offending anyone here. They're all formidable men. You're right. There are plenty of veterans attending the training camp for the first time, but they are already part of the Special Operations Regiment. Will was not his usual arrogant self after hearing the whispers. He stayed silent and became timid among the crowd. Pamela and the others were more excited than frightened. The people inside this base are all highly ranked soldiers and impressive men in the army. We can count ourselves lucky to be acquainted with just a few of them. All right. Friends and families, come over here. I want all the soldiers to follow me. In the end, the crowd was segregated into two groups. The soldiers were crouching in front while their families sat behind on the benches provided. Pamela and Bailey were overjoyed to see the colonels and officers lined up in front of them. Pamela began to scan her surroundings as a thought popped into her mind. She sneered after examining the crowd. Levi Garrison is a joke. Didn't he say he'll be attending as well? Where is he? I can't even spot his shadow. Among all these people. Don't tell me you believe in that scum's words. I did not even take him. Seriously last night, Bailey responded mockingly. Abigail started looking for Levi as well. She thought Levi would come, but she did not see him anywhere. Will had already searched the crowd with his gaze, and he did not encounter Levi either. He thought to himself sarcastically. Where are you, Levi Garrison? You're just a piece of human trash good at talking big at the end of the day. Quiet down, everyone. The King of War, Kieran, will make an appearance. Soon. An officer waved his hand in front to signal everyone. The crowd fell. Silent as they held their breaths involuntarily, waiting for the King of War to show himself. 
a military SUV drove into the area shortly after. The soldiers and guards saluted immediately at the sight of the vehicle. A murmur of excitement rippled through the crowd. The god of war is here. Pamela and Bailey stared unblinkingly at the SUV. A young man dressed in a military outfit with one star embedded on his shoulder got out of the car. That man was the king of war, Kieran. Every soldier gazed at him with respect after he got out of the car. All the family members gasped in terror when they saw Kieran's appearance. The king of war is such a young man? Everyone's eyes were still fixated on the SUV because they assumed the next person to come out of the car would be the god of war. But they were met with disappointment. Someone was seated inside the SUV, but he did not get out of the car. Kieran moved forward and addressed the crowd. First of all, I want to welcome everyone to the training camp's opening ceremony. Next, I have a statement to announce. The god of war himself is seated inside the car. But there are privacy rules to follow in the army. Non-military personnel are not allowed to meet with him. Everyone was well aware of the privacy rules, but they could not help feeling a little regretful for missing the opportunity to meet with the god of war. Even Will Ramos was disheartened. Kieran added, however, the god of war will meet with the newcomers later. The passion returned to Will's deadpan eyes instantaneously. I can finally meet my idol. The friends and families of the participants stared intently at the SUV in an attempt to discern the god of war's figure. Pamela Rogers and Bailey Black did that too. Pamela even put on a pair of glasses to aid with her eyesight. Abigail looked in the direction of the SUV curiously as well. Suddenly, she exclaimed subconsciously, Why does he resemble my brother-in-law? Pamela was shocked. You think so too? That man inside the car does look like Levi Garrison. Let me see. Bailey Black put on his glasses and narrowed his eyes at the SUV. I think this person does look similar to him too. The Protector Chapter 113 Abigail and her parents exchanged glances with one another as a thought flashed across their minds. Could Levi Garrison be the god of war? But they quickly erased that idea. That's impossible. If Levi is the god of war, why did he let Aaron and Caitlin live in such a small room? Why is Aaron still driving a hevel if his son-in-law is so capable? Say, will the god of war wear a military outfit if he's here in the army base? Bailey asked suddenly. Of course. This is such an important ceremony. Abigail and her mother answered at the same time. They did not believe the god of war to be Levi despite the resemblance in appearance. At that moment, someone got out of the car. That person was Azure Dragon dressed in his military outfit. Kieran nodded in Azure Dragon's direction when he sensed his movements. That must be the god of war. Everyone gazed in that direction frantically. The outsiders thought that only the god of war could trigger such respectful acknowledgement from Kieran. But they did not know it was normal for Kieran to greet Azure Dragon that way because the latter was Kieran's senior. Moreover, Azure Dragon's rank was blocked by the car because he got down from the other side of the vehicle. So the crowd assumed him to be the god of war. I am right. There's no way Levi Garrison is the god of war. I am satisfied with this outcome now. We've finally seen the god of war's great appearance. Pamela and her husband were exhilarated. Everyone was under the impression that they had met with the actual god of war. But they did not know that Azure Dragon deliberately got out of the car to ventilate the air inside the vehicle because Levi wanted to smoke. The opening ceremony ended quickly. Pamela Rogers and Bailey Black had their wish fulfilled as they were acquainted with Kieran before they left. However, they did not know that Levi had arranged for Kieran to look for Abigail on purpose. 
Pamela and Bailey were contented because they thought. The meeting with Kieran was due to fate. The newcomers were gathered together after their friends and families left. Will and the other soldiers were agitated because they would be meeting the God of War now. Levi got out of the car and walked toward the group of soldiers with Azure. Dragon beside him. Will was positioned at the back of the platoon, so he could not get a good look at the ongoing scene. He barely made out the newly appeared figures. Oh? That person's silhouette looks like Levi Garrison, Will uttered to himself. In astonishment with a frown. Levi and Azure Dragon stood in front of the platoon. Clarity washed over everyone when they saw Azure Dragon's rank. He's not. The God of War. The God of War is the man standing next to him. That man in. Casual wear. Kieran came to a halt in front of Levi and saluted him. Report, sir. We have. Gathered all the newcomers. Please provide us with further instructions. Kieran's gesture had indirectly reflected Levi's status. Levi raised his voice firmly, at ease, soldiers. All the newcomers made a similar and synchronized movement upon. Receiving the order. Everyone panted heavily as they gazed at the god of war in awe, who was. Merely a few steps away from them. Color drained from Will's face after he discerned Levi's face. H H he. He's. The god of war? I'm not mistaken, right? Levi Garrison is the god of war. No. Wonder he said he could attend the ceremony at will. He even mentioned the. Ceremony would not proceed without him. Will's heart was beating in his throat as adrenaline coursed through his body. He was scared out of his wits. When he looked up, Will noticed Levi was staring at him with a smile. Fear. Overwhelmed him at that acknowledgement. Thump. Will's vision went black as he passed out on the ground. Everyone was stunned. We are excited, but his condition is simply an exaggeration. Levi asked coldly, where is this soldier from? What's with that terrible stamina and fragile body? The Protector Chapter 114 He is Will Ramos from South City's South War Zone, sir. Someone reported. Immediately. Kieran said furiously. How did he qualify the selection with that kind of stamina? Send him back to where he came from. Afterwards, Levi's brief pep talk to the soldiers marked the beginning of the training camp. Aaron visited Levi's house when he returned home that night. He was there to inform Levi that Pamela and Bailey were willing to accept his apology that night because they were in a good mood. Okay. I'll go, Levi agreed. He also reserved a table at Grand Royal. Restaurant with Zoe. Abigail and her parents arrived after a short while. Pamela and Bailey were over the moon as they smiled dazzlingly the whole time. They were even polite to Aaron and Caitlin when they exchanged. Greetings. Why are you so happy? Let us be a part of the joy too. Aaron and Caitlin were intrigued. Pamela was pleased. This is all because of Will. Not only did we become acquainted with the King of War, Kieran, during the ceremony earlier, but we also got to see the God of War's appearance. Abigail nodded in agreement. Really? You're now acquainted with Kieran? Aaron was caught in excitement. I want to get to know these influential figures too. Exhilaration was written all over Bailey's face. That's right. He even knows. Our names. He said Abigail looks like his sister. What? The King of War, Kieran, knows your names? Oh my God. Caitlin was. Astounded. Pamela explained, they had our information as well as Will's, so they know. Everyone about us. I think Kieran accepted us as part of his circle. Why else? Would he take the initiative to meet with us? Bailey nodded. Yes. We do have the qualifications and background to be included in his circle. 
Kiran told us to look for him if we face any trouble in the future. Aaron and Caitlin could not be more jealous about Abigail and her families. Look. I am very happy today. Do not hesitate to contact me if you need any help. In the future, Caitlin, Bailey said to his sister. Thank you, Bailey. Thank you. Aaron and Caitlin expressed their gratitude. Immediately. We've been waiting for so long for him to say that. Bailey shifted his gaze onto Levi. But he must apologize first. Yes, that's right. He needs to say that he's sorry. Otherwise, we will never. Accept all of you. Pamela was determined. Abigail whispered to Levi as she was caught in a difficult position too. Please. Don't mind this, Levi. Zoe urged him as well. Just do as they say. I'm very sorry, uncle and aunt. I shouldn't have talked back to you. Yesterday. Levi apologized. Okay. I will forgive you because I am in a good mood today. Pamela waved. Her hand. Bailey questioned him suddenly. By the way, did you attend the ceremony? Today? We did not see you there just now. Pamela stared at Levi mockingly. Let's listen to his excuse. I went. But you were not qualified to meet with me. Levi told them the truth. But his honesty infuriated Pamela and Bailey. They glared at him in fury. Aaron and Caitlin were dumbfounded. We poured in so much effort to finally get on good terms with them. But Levi has to ruin everything again. Zoe was dazed. What did he say? The door to the private room was pushed open just as Pamela and Bailey were about to unleash their anger. Mr. Black, MDM. Rogers, something. Terrible has happened. Mr. Ramos was kicked out from the Northampton war zone because he's not qualified to join the training camp due to his poor body condition. They will be sending him into the room now. The Protector Chapter 115 Pamela and her husband's faces turned white upon hearing the news. What? Poor body condition? Not qualified to participate in the training camp? Is. There a mix-up here? They were caught in utter disbelief. We know Will's. Capabilities well. He is definitely strong enough to take part in the training. Camp. The door was pushed open again while they fell into a daze. Two waiters brought Will into the room as he lay on a stretcher. Two men from the army followed behind them. They were tasked to send Will back. He's really here. What happened? Pamela asked in a hurry. But Will saw Levi from the corner of his eyes when he was about to speak. Arg, he passed out again. The soldiers sneered. Look at that. This is the eighth time he fainted. How? Can he participate in the training camp in that condition? They were puzzled as well. What's wrong with him? He blacked out whenever. We mentioned the god of war. But this time, he fainted before anyone said. Anything. Pamela talked to one of the soldiers. Is there any chance for Will Ramos to re-enter the training camp? I'm afraid that's not possible. He passed out in front of the god of war. That's considered an offensive act. The king of war, Kieran, is very displeased. With him. I believe that Will Ramos' career is ruined from today onwards. The soldier answered honestly. He disrespected the god of war. That's a gutsy move. The other soldier. Added sarcastically. Pamela and Bailey were unsettled by the soldier's elaboration. Did he offend? The god of war? Even the Rogers family and the Black family do not have the courage to do that. No one had the interest to continue with the meal after the soldiers left. Will regained consciousness after some time. He was about to pass out again when he saw Levi after he woke up. But Levi quickly ordered, don't faint again. Will finally recomposed himself, but his face was filled with terror and his 
mind was blank. What happened, child? Pamela asked. I... I saw the god of war, Will stammered. But why did you pass out? Bailey and Pamela were caught in perplexity. That's because the god of war is... Will looked at Levi in fright as he spoke. He wanted to inform them of the truth about Levi's identity, but the words... stuck in his throat. The privacy rules of the army surfaced in his mind. I will be exposing... classified information protected by the army if I tell them about the god of... war's identity. Everyone gazed at Levi as well. A thought popped into their minds. Perhaps... He's trying to tell us that Levi is the god of war? The resemblance between the man seated inside the car and Levi is too uncanny. They waited for Will to complete his sentence anxiously. Finally, Will uttered, the god of war is my idol. My body is weak, so I fainted. When I saw him, I am a huge embarrassment to everyone. Oh, I see. You almost scared me there. I thought you are trying to tell us that. Levi is the god of war. Pamela breathed a sigh of relief. That's fine. Take a good rest to recover your health. You don't have to participate in the training camp anymore. Pamela consoled him. Bailey eyed Levi and asked the question in his mind, did you see him at the training base today, Will? Yes. Will gave Levi a look with complicated emotions in his eyes. What? So you really went? Pamela and the others were in disbelief. Mr. Black, MDM. Rogers, please take me away for now. I would like to rest. The Protector Chapter 116 Will did not have the courage to stay a second longer in the same room as Levi. We're not finishing the meal anymore. We'll be leaving now, Pamela said. Aaron and Caitlin were worried. Have you forgiven us then? Yes. I've accepted his apology. By the way, you are allowed to attend. Mother's birthday banquet this year. She has accepted your return to the family, Bailey Black answered. Caitlin was delighted after she was informed of the news. I can finally attend. Mother's birthday banquet since I left my home 20 years ago. We will be there. Aaron said emotionally. We can hold our heads high by. The time we attend the banquet because Zoe's project is progressing well. Caitlin glanced at Levi happily after Pamela and her family left. All right. We. Will forgive you this time. Aaron pleaded with his wife sincerely, will you allow me to hang out with my. Friends tonight, Caitlin. Fine. Off you go. Take this bank card with you. I'm warning you now. Do not. Gamble tonight. Caitlin handed a credit card to Aaron. Levi knew Aaron was a gambling addict since a long time ago. He lost a lot of. Money in the past. I even had to clear his debt previously. Caitlin forbids him from taking part in those entertainments afterwards. He's not allowed to drink with friends too. I suppose she's making an exception today because her return has been accepted by the Black family today. All right. I've quit gambling for a long time now. Aaron was elated like a child. Levi was amused by his behavior. He's a typical henpecked man. The four of them parted ways afterward. Aaron went to meet up with his friends. They were tipsy after gulping a few bottles of wine down. Alex Glenn placed his arm around Aaron's shoulder. I heard there's a new underground casino in Northampton. Why don't we try out our luck there? Aaron shook his head. No way. I made a promise to my wife not to gamble. Anymore. Don't worry. We are just going to play a few rounds to try out our luck. You won't lose any money, Alex persuaded him. That's right. We did not bring a lot of money with us anyway. We'll play in small amounts, just for fun. What if we get lucky? 
Do you know Andrew Zafer? From the marketplace? I heard he earned 800,000 from the casino with a mere 3,000 starting amount. He's right. We are so jealous of him. Aaron's resolution wavered as his friends convinced him. Fine. I'll go. But I have to say this in advance. I can only fork out 5,000. Sure, sure, Aaron and the gang headed toward the underground casino. Together. Aaron was especially excited when they arrived at the venue. A man, dressed lavishly with a glass of red wine in his hand, was seated on the second floor of the casino while he gazed at the crazed gamblers. Beneath him, he asked with a smile, Aaron Lopez is here. Yes, Mr. Rogers. The men engaged in that conversation were none other than Oswald Rogers and Howard Corbin. Oswald sneered while looking at Aaron. I've been thinking of ways to target all of you, but here you are, offering to step into my trap on your own. Accord. Howard sought out Oswald's opinion. How should we proceed, Mr. Rogers? He's going to lose. We'll make him lose everything. Even the Lopez family will not be able to cover his debt. I am going to force Levi to his death with this staggering amount of money. Oswald grinned like a madman. Howard nodded. I'll make the necessary arrangements, Mr. Rogers. I will. Make sure to let Aaron Lopez learn his lesson well this time. The Protector Chapter 117 Aaron was oblivious to the incoming danger that awaited him. He was. Enjoying himself to his heart's content at that moment. He had won for a few consecutive rounds and earned roughly 100,000. On his tenth straight win, Aaron's earnings accumulated to a few million. Alex and the others persuaded Aaron to continue with his gambling. You're too lucky today, Aaron. Go on. Let's go big. Ten million is easily achievable. With your insane luck tonight. A gambling addict caught up in his moment of glory often lost his ability to think rationally. Aaron was confident he could bring home ten million by the time he was done gambling that night. Zoe and Levi were startled awake by the ringing from their phones in the middle of the night. Caitlin had dialed their numbers relentlessly. Zoe was wide awake the moment she answered the call. What? Oh my. God. Her face went paper white as the phone slipped out of her hand and fell onto the floor with a thud. Levi asked immediately, what's wrong? Zoe sobbed. Father went to the casino and lost 300 million. He's being detained right now because he was caught cheating. What? 300 million? How did he lose so much money? Levi frowned. Something's wrong. Someone must have set a trap for Aaron. Where is he? Levi added. I don't know. Let's meet up with Mom for now. Caitlin was already tear-stricken by the time Levi and Zoe arrived. Levi floored the accelerator toward the underground casino after Caitlin informed them of the location. The atmosphere inside the casino was unbearable. Deafening noises and cigarette smoke lingered in the air. A few muscular men came in front of Levi, Zoe, and Caitlin. Who are you? People. They inquired fiercely. Levi stated the aim of their visit directly. We are here to look for Aaron. Lopez. Oh. You are that cheater's family. Follow me. They led Levi and the others. To the second floor. Levi sounded the situation out in the meantime. What happened here? Actually. Aaron Lopez cheated after he started to lose money. Then we caught him. Red-handed. How dare he cheats after losing 300 million to the casino. We. Need to follow the rules here and chop off his fingers. One of the men. Sneered. Zoe and Caitlin were frightened as their faces turned to the shade of chalk. More than ten men stood menacingly inside a large private room on the second floor with batons in their hands. 
Levi, Zoe, and Caitlin caught the distinctive smell of blood the moment they entered the room. A person was lying on the floor in a curled position. His body twitched faintly. In a pool of blood. Dead. Aaron. Zoe and Caitlin rushed forward when they recognized the person to be Aaron Lopez. Levi grimaced when he saw how terribly beaten Aaron was. Save me. Save me, please. Aaron yelped fearfully when he saw his family. The few thugs surrounded Levi and the others instantaneously. A scary-looking man sat on the sofa with a gold necklace around his neck. Dressed in a leopard-printed shirt. He tossed a cigarette butt on the floor and crushed it with his foot. Then he looked up. Are you Aaron Lopez's family members? Yes. That's right. He's my father-in-law. Levi met that man's eyes. Let me introduce myself. I am the owner of this casino. My name is Enzo. Fielder. Everyone refers to me as Mr. Enzo. Enzo pointed at Aaron. Your father-in-law lost 300 million to the casino and tried to trick us. According to the rules of this casino, he will have to settle the 300 million debt and let us chop off all 10 of his fingers to settle the score. Otherwise, he's going to die here. He <laughs> he. Enzo threatened Levi and the others. Zoe and Caitlin were trembling in a terror-stricken manner. Aaron cowered in Caitlin's arms as his body quaked uncontrollably. The Protector Chapter 118 Levi sized up his surroundings and said mockingly, Why do I feel that this casino is not a place of such high standards that someone could lose 300 million in a night? Humph. That's because your father-in-law took a great risk. He thought he could win 100 million after earning 10 million. So who is to blame for his greediness? More importantly, no one can condone his cheating behavior in this place. Enzo waved his hand. Alex and the others were dragged forward. Swiftly. Tell them whether I'm speaking of the truth or not. Enzo ordered. Alex and his friends answered immediately. Yes. That is the truth. We told. Aaron to stop after he won 10 million. But he wanted to continue gambling to win more money. So he brought this on himself for losing ultimately. We did. Not expect him to cheat afterwards. Why do we have a friend like you? Aaron. Aaron looked at his friends incredulously in a daze. All of you framed me. You set a trap to frame me. Aaron roared. Alex glowered at him. Did we force you to do anything? You made all the decisions on your own accord. Aaron fell silent. True, no one forced me to do anything. I did everything. Willingly. I can only blame my own greediness. Zoe understood that it was a setup, so she whispered to Levi, Should we call the cops? No. Calling the cops will only worsen the situation. They might resort to desperate measures if we do that, Levi answered. Unfortunately, Enzo overheard their conversation. He sneered. Call the cops? Sure, go ahead and do that. He borrowed the money from others, so. We have written proof as well as the various documents he mortgaged to us. We carried out every procedure according to the law. Please feel free to. Contact the cops. The court will confiscate the Lopez family's business and properties by that time. Everyone looked at Aaron in bewilderment. Aaron nodded. I did mortgage the family house and business. I deliberately went to the Lopez family house to steal the documents after I lost all my money. I wanted to get the money to turn the tables around. But I lost. Everything instead and even incurred a 300 million debt on myself. Please don't tell my father about this. He will kill me if he knows what I've done. Aaron said hurriedly. Enzo jeered at Levi and the others. 
Do you want to call the cops? It's up to you to make the decision. Zoe was clueless as to how she should react to the unexpected turn of events. Levi grimaced. They clearly planned every move to target us. Have you made up your mind? Enzo asked. We will not call the cops, and will return the money. But we do not have 300 million with us right now. Can you give us a few days to collect the sum? Zoe proposed. Sure. No problem. Enzo added mockingly. I am not worried at all. If all of you disappear, then I will look for Harry Lopez instead. But can you please don't chop off my father's fingers? Zoe pleaded for mercy. I'll do you a favor. You can bring him away now. But for every extra day you fail to return the money, I will chop off one of his fingers, Enzo smiled. Sinisterly. All right. We agree. Levi brought Aaron and his family away from the casino. In the end, Caitlin was on the verge of tears when they reached the entrance. What should we do? Where can we find 300 million at a moment's notice? We have no other choice but to say that we'll return the money. This is the best we can do to delay the situation from turning south immediately, Zoe lamented. Aaron rebuked Levi when he saw the smiling expression on the latter's face. Why are you smiling? Why don't you come up with a solution instead, you useless piece of shit? I could have settled this issue effortlessly if my son-in-law is a capable person. Regretfully, you are a good-for-nothing piece of crap. You are to blame for everything that has happened today. The Protector Chapter 119 Levi was stunned after listening to Aaron. He looked at his father-in-law in disbelief. Is he blaming me for his own wrongdoings? Zoe was slightly upset. What are you saying, Dad? You caused this mess. Yourself. Levi has got nothing to do with this matter. Don't give me that nonsense. He could have paid for the 300 million debt. Easily if he's as successful as before but he doesn't even have a single dime. With him now. Aaron stared at Levi hatefully. Aren't you capable? You said. You're acquainted with the God of War, right? Can you handle this mess now? You must divorce Zoe if you fail to take care of this matter. I am a man of. My word. Aaron vented all his pent-up anger at Levi after the horrible experience he. Underwent. Caitlin glared at him. What are you talking about? That's not important. The most important thing is to find a way to collect 300 million as soon as possible. Let's go home now. Enzo dialed a number after Levi and the others left. I've executed your orders, Mr. Rogers. Okay. You can pay Harry Lopez a visit directly after a few hours. The person on the other end of the phone replied. Aaron suggested when they arrived home, Honey, only your brother, Bailey, can help us now. Let's borrow money from them while they are still in the city. You are only going to infuriate them for knocking on their doors in the middle of the night. We'll wait until tomorrow before we do anything. Caitlin glowered at her husband. Zoe asked her father with a grim expression, what happened exactly? Dad. Aaron described everything in detail from the beginning. He had won multiple rounds consecutively and accumulated winnings up to 10 million initially. But. When he seized the opportunity to gamble further, he began to lose. I realize now that I've been tricked. Alex and his friends are a group of. Bastards. Aaron snarled. Zoe nodded. That was indeed a trap. We have two ways of resolving this issue now. The first way is to return the money. The second method is to investigate this matter and find out the person who set you up. Personally, 
I think the second method is a wiser choice. We should investigate deeper before we pay them. Levi offered his idea. Aaron stared at him fiercely. Are you suggesting that on purpose? Did you not listen to what they said? Now you're telling me to wait and spend time to carry out an investigation? By the time we find out anything, I'll be left fingerless and even toeless. All right, let's not argue any more. We'll go to my brother's place to borrow money from them come morning. Caitlin was displeased. Levi left the house quietly afterward. Zoe wanted to think of an alternative solution, so she left as well. The next morning, everyone in the Lopez family was still sound asleep when someone busted the door open with a loud bang. A group of burly men covered in tattoos rushed into the house in an imposing manner. They went straight to the Lopez family's living room. Harry and the others hurriedly checked out the situation as they were startled by the commotion. All of them were frightened by the unwelcoming sight. What are you doing? You're trespassing on private property, so don't you dare do anything to us. Harry bellowed in rage. Enzo threw Aaron's IOU at Harry without saying a word. Harry and the others were shocked after reading the note. What? Aaron owes you 300 million? He even mortgaged the Lopez family's properties and business. Harry's vision went black as he nearly fainted. Enzo said with a smile, that's right. All the Lopez family's possessions are mortgaged to me now, including this house. Aaron Lopez even brought me all the necessary documents, so we are simply following the legal procedures. Here. The Protector Chapter 120 Harry hurriedly went to look for the mortgage documents, but he soon realized all the documents were stolen. I was wondering to myself why Aaron sneaked into the house last night. So. He came here to steal the documents. Henry said angrily. You better pay me 300 million as soon as possible, now that I own all your properties and business. I will have the court to confiscate these possessions. If you do not cough up the money. Enzo urged the Lopez family in a joyful manner. Harry Lopez did not say a word. I had not distributed the Lopez family's inheritance previously. So Aaron's IOU is legally binding because of his status. As my descendant. You son of A.B. asterisk T.C.H., Aaron Lopez. Harry was seething with rage. You have one day to return the money to me. Otherwise, I'm sure you know. What consequences await you? Enzo left after he spoke. All hell broke loose in the Lopez family. Let's go to Aaron's place right away. Aaron and Caitlin were about to depart from their house at sunrise. Bang, bang, bang. Someone banged on their door impatiently. A group of people rushed into the house with Harry leading the way after. Aaron unlocked the door. He slapped his son across the face without a second thought. What a dumb son I have. What have you done? Then. Harry slapped Aaron a few more times. You. You already know, father. Aaron asked timidly while covering his. Face. A bunch of people came to stir up a ruckus at the family house early in the. Morning. What do you think? Harry panted heavily. Fabian said with a grimace, you better start talking. Henry sneered. I heard you lost the money because you gambled again. You are just like your son-in-law, always failing to correct your bad habits. Harry fixated his eyes on Aaron. I'll chop off your ears if you do not explain everything clearly today. Aaron glanced at Caitlin before he began. This is all Levi Garrison's fault. What? How is this matter related to him? Harry asked in surprise. Aaron nodded. Levi lost the money because he went to the casino. I had no other choice but to steal the documents because they wanted to kill Levi on 
the spot. He knew his family would beat him up if he informed them of the truth while their anger was at the boiling point. So he placed all the blame on Levi. Instead, they did not trust Aaron's words at that moment, so everyone turned to look at Caitlin. Caitlin said through her gritted teeth, that's right. It's all because of Levi. Garrison. Aaron has already quit gambling for six years now. Levi has been gambling because he wants to become rich. Do you still remember the money we paid back previously, father? Harry nodded. Of course. Don't tell me that Levi earned that five million through gambling. Caitlin nodded. That's right. He did not borrow the money but got it through gambling. This time, he lost 300 million. Henry questioned her, but I verified this myself. He really did borrow the money. Caitlin responded with a question on her own, do you think he can borrow that large amount of money without anything to mortgage, Henry? Henry understood instantaneously. Now I get it. The bank loaned him the money because he has the capability to return the money through gambling. Caitlin's speech convinced every member of the Lopez family. Aaron gave his wife a thumbs up internally. She's brilliant. We've successfully placed all the blame on Levi with that perfect excuse. Aaron seized the moment and said, Don't you see why Levi is not here? That's because he fled in advance. Harry was infuriated to his limits. I'm going to kill you, Levi Garrison. Let's go and find Levi now. Everyone left angrily. The Protector Chapter 121 Aaron drew in a deep breath after the Lopez family had left they were safe. For now. Woo honey, you sure are smart. Aaron didn't forget to give Caitlin a word of compliment. Hurry up and go look for my brother and Pamela. Or you'll be the one to lose. A finger. Caitlin said as she rolled her eyes at him. The two immediately rushed to the Marriott Hotel. Is there something you want for you to see us at this hour? Pamela asked. Bailey, Pamela, I'll cut to the chase then. We want to borrow 300 million from you. We're in need of money for our business. Don't worry about us not paying you back. You guys should know about Zoe's project. It's a project worth more than a billion. 300 million. Will definitely not be a problem. Aaron and Caitlin went straight to the question of money. Pamela and Bailey exchanged glances. We need to discuss this first. After half an hour, the two agreed to lend them 300 million. Mainly because Zoe's project was guaranteed to succeed. That's great. Aaron was exhilarated. However, at this moment, Pamela's phone rang. It was Oswald. Pamela answered the call. Oswald, what's the matter? Aunt Pamela, I have something to tell you. Pamela gave Aaron and Caitlin a puzzled look. Her expression took on a drastic change the more she listened to Oswald. Okay, I got it. I won't lend it then. After hanging up the phone, Pamela snapped, You people were lying? Do you really need money for your business? Aaron, you've lost 300 million from gambling, didn't you? Get lost, now. Bailey's fury sprang to life when he learned about the truth. Come see us again only after you settled your debt. Then the couple kicked Aaron and Caitlin out, leaving them stupefied. Why did they change their mind after answering one phone call? What do we do now? Aaron sweated with anxiety. On the other side, Zoe was trying to find a solution as well, but the most she could come up with was 50 million. She was at her wit's end, as they had already invested the rest of the money in the project. Besides, the project would have to be suspended as well if she took that 50 million away. It was to check on this matter that Levi had left early this morning. However, the strange thing was that the other party clearly didn't cheat. It 
was Aaron who lost the money after gambling with an expert. It was clearly a deception, yet it was seamless. There must be something fishy. I can definitely find out the truth if I call the cops, but Aaron will have to be imprisoned, and Zoe will be heartbroken if that happens. Levi didn't want that to see that. He could have easily paid up that three hundred million, but he wanted to find out the mastermind behind this scheme first. Everyone had thought of every possible way, but they just couldn't get the money together. Dread nodded at Aaron's insides at the thought of having his fingers chopped off tomorrow. Honey, what should I do? Think of something. I don't want to have my fingers chopped off. Aaron shouted anxiously. Caitlin creased her brows. I heard Zoe will contact major investors next to borrow money, but I'm afraid it'll take a little longer. Probably a few days. Few days? I don't have a few days. My fingers will be chopped off in a few days, that's for sure. Aaron got all sweaty. So find someone to replace you during these few days. There was a bright light in Aaron's eyes. You mean I should put Levi on the spot and have his fingers chopped off on my behalf? Who else do you think if not Levi? You've thrown the blame on him. Anyway. Caitlin gave him an angry stare. Aaron nodded in approval. That's right. He's just a good for nothing. What's the big deal with having his fingers chopped off? He has to rely on us to feed him, anyway. That's going to be the biggest contribution he's ever made for the family. The Protector Chapter 122 Caitlin sighed. But the problem is Zoe. If she finds out, she definitely will not agree to this. We'll just hide from her then and tell her that the casino is giving us a few more days. We'll trick Levi to come over and have him go in my stead. Aaron said. Then we'll have to call Dad and the others over to impose a little pressure on him. They've been looking for him all day, but to no avail, Caitlin said. Aaron quickly made the arrangements. After learning the news of the postponement for a few days, Zoe was much more relieved, but she didn't stop looking for solutions. When Harry heard that Levi had been found, he immediately rushed over. Thereafter, Aaron gave Enzo a call, asking if he could let Levi take his place. To his surprise, Enzo agreed at once. After hanging up, Enzo called Oswald. Mr. Rogers, you were right. The Lopez family is using Levi as a substitute. Okay. Let's make it a slow and terrible ordeal for Levi. Send me the footage. Of his fingers chopped off tomorrow. Oswald's cold and crazed voice sounded from over the phone. Levi's investigation was beginning to take shape when Aaron called. Levi, come quick. Things have changed. Come straight to the casino. Hanging up the phone. Levi made a beeline for the casino. He realized Harry. And the others were there when he arrived. Upon seeing him, they charged forward, pushing and shoving him. What the hell? Did you lose 300,000 in gambling? You've... F. King ruined the Lopez family. You're going to destroy the Lopez family. I'm going to kill you. Utterly confused. Levi stared at the crowd incredulously. Me, gambling? It dawned on him that Aaron and Caitlin had put the blame on him when he noticed their unnatural demeanor from afar. Thus, it was inevitable that Harry and the others would vent their anger on him as they didn't know the truth. Aaron seized the chance to come forward, scolding, take responsibility for what you've done, Levi. Yet. Take care of it yourself. The mass put in their two penny worth. Aaron pulled Levi to a side and said sternly, You will go to meet Mr. Enzo on my behalf later. Or I'll get Zoe to divorce you if you refuse. I have your marriage certificate and household registration in my hands, so I mean what I say. 
You will be our best son-in-law if you go in Aaron's stead. Caitlin added. We won't cast you aside even if you've lost all your fingers. Zoe and we will support you for the rest of your life. Yeah, hurry up and agree. It doesn't matter if you lose a finger anyway. Aaron said in a low voice. Disappointment. What a disappointment. Levi could only feel the indifference and coldness of humanity. How could they do this to me when the chips are down? If it weren't for Zoe, he wouldn't have wanted to stay in this home. However, Aaron and Caitlin had no other choice. What are you people hesitating for? Send him out and let him take care of everything. Harry urged. At this moment, Enzo came with his men, surrounding Levi and the others. He'll go. Before Levi could react, he was pushed out by Aaron and Caitlin. Levi Garrison, right? Take him away, said Enzo with a sneer. With that, Levi was taken away by Enzo's followers. Aaron and Caitlin heaved a sigh of relief. Let's go now before we get dragged into this. Aaron and Caitlin departed instantly afraid that Enzo would go back on his words. The Protector Chapter 123 I'm wondering if we can push everything on Levi, said Aaron with a frown. After leaving the underground casino, Caitlin's expression changed slightly. You mean to transfer the three hundred million debt to Levi and then get him to divorce Zoe and cut off all ties with him? Yet. Yeah. That would be killing two birds with one stone, we don't have to pay the money back and we can send away that odious brat. Drop it, you. You're the one who lost the money, and you signed the agreement. How are you going to do that? Aaron sighed, his heart sinking. I need to think of a way. In the casino, Levi was brought into a small and dark room. Enzo sat in front of him surrounded by sturdy men. Your father-in-law has pushed you out to have your fingers chopped off on behalf of him, Levi Garrison, said Enzo with a bloodthirsty smile. Are you ready? Enzo picked up a sharp machete that glowed under the lights. To the side were people holding cameras in their hands, ready to film. It was an assignment from Oswald to film the process of Levi having his fingers chopped off. Hold it right there, said Levi suddenly. Enzo grinned, revealing his rows of gold teeth. Why? Are you afraid? Ha ha. Levi said nothing and silently lit a cigarette. Cough. The next second, everyone was choking and coughing violently. What on earth does that cigarette contain? Enzo asked, inspecting the cigarette. The smoke is so strong. I think it's a special cigarette from the war zone, Mr. Enzo, said a thug. Uncertainly. My childhood friend who's a soldier gave me one before. They. Tobacco scent is really strong. Everyone's expression changed at the mention of the special cigarette. Enzo snorted. Drop it, you guys. You think a crook who just came out of prison can smoke a cigarette like that? Levi took a puff of his cigarette and said calmly, Tell me who instructed you to do this before I finish smoking this cigarette or you'll be sorry for this. Enzo and his men burst into laughter. Levi's going to get his fingers chopped off. Why is he even threatening me? Everyone looked at Levi as if he was a fool. Who exactly is having it worse? Enzo guffawed. Is this kid crazy? Don't worry. It won't hurt. It's just one cut. There's not much time left, said Levi, looking at the cigarette that was about to burn out. You'll be really, really sorry for this if you choose to remain silent. Enzo and his men snickered. Okay then, show us what you got. We'd like to see what you are going to do to us after smoking that cigarette. Everyone watched as Levi finished smoking the cigarette, threw it to the ground, and stomped it out. He lifted his head and glanced at Enzo and his men. You'll soon regret this. Regret, 
My foot. Not before I chop off your hand. Shook with fury, Enzo lifted the knife in his hand suddenly. Bang! The door suddenly collapsed with a deafening crash, causing Enzo to stop in. Fright! In the next second, sturdy men with different skin colors but uniformly dressed in suits rushed in from the outside. With an average height of over six feet two, they stood there like mountains. These people were none other than James and other mercenaries that Rick had hired. They were currently hiding in the shadows, serving as Levi's bodyguards. It was through the signal Levi had left that they found this place. Attack! James commanded, and with a loud howl, the mercenaries pounced on their prey like tigers dashing down a mountain. The Protector Chapter 124 Bang! Crackle! Ugh! Despite being at the top of their class, the thugs at the casino were not it. The same level as the mercenaries who had been in and out of the battlefield. All year round. They were all knocked down in less than a minute, unable to deal with James. And his mercenaries' mortal blows. While the thugs bathed in blood, their faces disfigured, Enzo was the last man standing. Beat him. Levi ordered expressionlessly. James grabbed Enzo's face and punched him hard. After seven to eight consecutive blows, Enzo's face sank in and was beyond recognition. The shrill cries like those of a pig being slaughtered reverberated in the small and dark room. They'd never expected Levi to have so many bodyguards with extremely high combat effectiveness following him. Well, what did I say? Levi scoffed, looking condescendingly at the battered thugs. Now, spit it out. After being forced to take Aaron's place, Levi figured out that instead of investigating, he might as well use violence to make these people speak. I can't. Enzo said in fear. I'll be as good as dead. Beat him. Beat him until he speaks up. Levi said coldly. James and the others were militant and enjoyed crushing their enemies. At his command, they grew more violent, giving Enzo the most terrible beating. Until everyone was beaten half dead, Enzo raised his arms to surrender. I'll speak. I'll tell you everything. James yanked him toward Levi. I it was Howard Corbin of Levi Group. We were forced into this. And so. Confessed, but not daring to mention Oswald's name. However, Levi knew at once that it was Oswald. He glanced at the camera on the table and chuckled. It was he who asked. You to film the chopping of my fingers. Yes. Enzo nodded. Levi gave James a look. He immediately understood as he pinned Enzo to the table and put his hand on it, slowly lifting the sharp knife. Next to him, another mercenary took the camera. No. No. Sensing the situation, Enzo yelled at the top of his lungs. Aaaarg. Then he let out a terrible scream. Thereafter, Levi asked Enzo to send out the video, which Howard showed to. Oswald upon receiving it. Ha ha ha. Did you hear his scream? I can't believe a human is capable of making that sound. Oswald had a good laugh. Howard, send this video anonymously to everyone in the Lopez family. Including Zoe, he instructed. Very soon, everyone in the Lopez family received the video. Seeing that the person in the video had his fingers chopped off brutally. Aaron felt a flash of terror, his expression turning for the worse. Damn. That was too scary. Thank God that wasn't me. They really mean it. Caitlin got the scare of her life, and so did Harry and the others. Zoe, who was still on the hunt for a solution, almost threw her phone to the ground after looking at the footage that she had received suddenly. Dad's fingers were chopped off. Was he trying to comfort me when he said that it was postponed for a few days? Zoe quickly made a call. Dad, what happened to you? Are you okay? I'm fine, 
Aaron said. Then who was it who had his fingers chopped off? Zoe asked in confusion. I it was Levi, Aaron faltered. What? Levi? How could it be? The Protector Chapter 125 Why is it Levi? Zoe sobbed after learning the truth. Caitlin snatched the phone over and said, Sweetie, we had no choice. It was. Levi who volunteered to take your dad's place. How could you do that? You didn't even tell me. Wait there, I'm coming. Home now. Zoe cried. Shortly after, Zoe arrived home. Sweetie, Levi told us not to tell you. It doesn't matter if he loses a few fingers anyway, but I can't lose any. Aaron said. A sob caught in Zoe's throat. Sweetie, you'll have to return the money as soon as possible. That way we can buy Levi a few more days, Caitlin said. But that just means he'll lose a finger with every passing day. Zoe screamed. How could you bear to do it? It's not like we have a choice. You can't just watch your dad suffer, can you? He's still young so he can take it. Caitlin comforted. Did you force him to go? Zoe asked, staring at them. He did it of his own free will. We didn't force him. Aaron denied. Caitlin exchanged a look with Aaron and blurted out, Sweetie, once we settle this debt, you should get a divorce with Levi. Zoe looked incredulous. What? Divorce? Dad, Levi suffered in your stead. How could you just give him the brush after using him? Are we such heartless people? Sweetie, Levi's sacrifice won't go unnoticed, Aaron and Caitlin said hastily. We're not ungrateful people. We'll compensate him with enough money. Once this is over. You. I'm so disappointed in them today. But you must divorce Levi. He has never been good enough for you in the first place, and now that his fingers are gone, he's not worthy of you. I can. Never tolerate my daughter marrying a cripple with incomplete fingers, said. Aaron adamantly. Zoe was bemused. How can they be so cruel to Levi just to save themselves? Zoe, you can't cry over spilt milk now. Just hurry up and pay off the debt if... You want Levi to suffer a little less, Caitlin said. Just then, Harry arrived. Our turning point is here. Harry couldn't contain his excitement. What do you mean, Dad? Aaron asked quizzically. Someone has just come to inform us that there is a person willing to help us. Pay back the money, but on one condition Zoe must remarry. Harry said. Really? Harry raised the 300 million check in his hand. They brought the check. Now the question is Zoe, will you remarry or not? Zoe was momentarily lost, but she knew that 300 million was too big an amount to get at this moment. What are you hesitating for? Go on, say yes. Aaron urged. Right now. Money was gold. Just say yes. If you agree now, Levi won't have to suffer so much, Caitlin. Said, causing Zoe to shudder as the cruel image from the video flashed in. Her mind. For Levi. Okay, I agree to remarry, said Zoe. The adults were instantly relieved. Harry took out a keycard and handed it to Zoe. If you agree, go look for him. At Sheraton Hotel. We only have the right to use the check once you arrive at the hotel. The Protector Chapter 126 Who is this person, Grandpa? Zoe asked. I don't know. But we were informed that he's someone who has pursued you. Before. As long as you marry him, he'll pay the 300 million for us. And he promises that the Lopez family will be worry-free for life, Harry said. Aaron and Caitlin looked at each other, their eyes brimming with joy at the blessing in disguise and at Zoe's remarriage to a super-rich man. Go on then. 
Mr. Enzo has changed his mind and is only giving us one day. If you're late, Levi will lose all his fingers. Harry prodded. Hearing that, Zoe accepted the keycard and dashed out. Naturally, these were all Oswald's arrangements. It was he who gave them that 300 million check. In his opinion, it was equivalent to not spending a single cent as the money would be returned to him after the Lopez family gave the check to Enzo. Not only could he turn Levi into a cripple and hound him to death, but he could also get Zoe, it was simply the most profitable business. With an apprehensive heart, Zoe finally arrived at the hotel. She knew what it signified, but the primary purpose at present was to pay back the money quickly and relieve Levi of his sufferings. And only by meeting the said person would he solve their problems. Arriving at the designated presidential suite, Zoe took a deep breath before opening the door. Standing in front of the French windows in the vast living room was a man whose back Zoe felt was familiar. When he turned around, Zoe was stunned. Oswald, it's you, she asked in disbelief. She had thought it would be someone else. After all, Oswald had never harassed her for the past six years. He would have made his move long ago. If he wanted to have her. Are you wondering why I haven't been looking for you for the past six years? Oswald said, seeing through Zoe's mind as he adjusted his gold-rimmed spectacles. Zoe nodded. The truth is I've been watching you all this time during these six years. Our number one beauty of Northampton. I wanted to see how long you two can last, but I didn't expect you to hold on for six years, Oswald sneered. You set up the whole thing about my dad losing money. Zoe asked. Remembering the matter suddenly. How could you say that? No one forced him to gamble. Oswald shrugged. You. You're a scoundrel, said Zoe angrily. Just give up, Zoe. If I could destroy you people six years ago, I can do it. Again. Oswald cackled with laughter. Thunderstruck, Zoe gazed at Oswald incredulously. You did that six years. Ago. Oswald sniggered. How do you think the Garrison family could overthrow? Levi six years ago. Zoe was as angry as hell upon learning that piece of information. I'm giving you two options, Zoe. 1. Strip naked and lie on the bed. 2. Leave now, but it will be disastrous for Levi. His fingers and toes will be chopped off, but I can't say if he'll choose to jump off the cliff in the end. Oswald's lips curved into a malicious smile at the thought that his goals of forcing Levi to death and having Zoe get into his bed were about to be achieved. Zoe was utterly floored. Oswald had planned everything beforehand, and she was left with no choice but to listen to him. Otherwise, Levi would be either crippled or dead. The Protector Chapter 127 Meanwhile, as soon as Zoe arrived at the hotel, Harry received a message. You can use the check now. Aaron headed to the underground casino with Harry. As soon as they arrived, they were brought up short by the sight of Levi. Coming down from the second floor, holding a stack of documents of title, deeds and so on in his hands. Most importantly, Levi's fingers were all completely intact. He was clean from head to toe, with not a single stain of blood to be seen. They looked at Levi's fingers. Perfectly intact. All ten fingers are still there. How is it even possible? His fingers were clearly chopped off from the video. As their mouths were still white agape with incredulity, Levi had already come up to them. Where did you get this check? Levi took over the check and had a premonition of something bad as he studied it. H. How are you okay? Didn't you have your finger chopped off? Aaron was baffled. Levi ignored them and suddenly raised his voice, How in the world did you get this check? Uh, Aaron hesitated. Spit it out. Levi snarled, 
exuding a breath of hostility that made the two of them hold their breaths as if they were being strangled at their necks. His gaze was especially terrifying. Intimidated, Aaron gave him a factual account of the chronology of the incident. At Sheraton Hotel on Maxwell Street. Aaron finished. How long has it been? Levi asked. It's probably too late. Aaron lowered his head. Harry nodded. Yeah, it's too late, even if you get there in a sports car. Levi threw the pile of documents to the ground, pushed them aside, and dialed Azure Dragon's number as he walked out. I need a chopper. Immediately. Now. Levi's voice was cold to the extreme. Less than five minutes after he left the casino, a military helicopter came to a halt on the square. Ignoring the astonishment of those passing by, Levi boarded the helicopter. A sports car might not make it there on time, but a helicopter could. I want the Sheraton Hotel's blueprint layout. A gleam of murderous intent flashed in Levi's eyes. In Sheraton Hotel's presidential suite, Zoe was still confronting Oswald. There's no use stalling for time, Zoe. The more you hesitate, the more Levi will suffer. Oswald chortled. Of course, Zoe understood that point, but she couldn't get past the hurdle in her heart. She even wanted to jump off the building and get it over with. Oswald stood with his back facing the window, appraising Zoe. Relax, I won't force you. I'll wait for you to get into my bed whenever you wish. The grin on Oswald's face widened like a devil from hell. Do you want me to broadcast it to you now to see how many of Levi's fingers have been chopped off? Oswald was well versed in psychological warfare. He was destroying Zoe's psychological defense to a great extent. You're a monster. Zoe shrieked, glaring at Oswald. You're not the first person to call me that. Every woman that I've slept with. And every man that I've killed called me a monster. Oswald gave a broken smile as he inched closer. Zoe stared at him in horror, moving back slowly. What? Is Levi that cripple really so good? How am I inferior to him? Oswald asked. No. You can never match him. Zoe shouted. Oswald took out his phone and sniggered. Howard, tell Enzo to chop off. Levi's hands and feet for me and send me the video. The Protector Chapter 128 Wait! Zoe shouted in panic when she heard that. I'll listen to you only if you don't make things hard for him. Just don't touch him. Then come on. Oswald opened his arms wide, waiting for Zoe to fall into his arms. Bang! Crack! Then, suddenly, the French windows behind Oswald made a sound like ice. Breaking and it shattered. A man rushed in from outside it was Levi. Bang! With a hard kick, he sent Oswald flying out of the way. Boom! Oswald slammed into the wall, bleeding all over the place. He was about to struggle to his feet when Levi grabbed his hair. Oomph! Levi gave him a sharp punch to the face causing Oswald's spectacles to crumble. Oomph! Then came the second punch. Oomph! At the third punch, Oswald passed out. Stop! Stop it, shouted Zoe, coming back to her senses. He's going to die. Right now, Levi had surely lost all sense of rationality. He had never been so infuriated before. Zoe was his bottom line. And whoever crossed that line was a dead man. Zoe looked at Levi in fear. She could feel his overwhelming hostility. This is a 30-story building. How did he come in from the outside? He's the devil of a man. Let's go. Zoe pulled Levi away, afraid that he would really beat Oswald to death if they stayed there any longer. After Levi had left with Zoe, Several bodyguards entered the room. The sight of Oswald lying in a pool of blood scared them. 
who did this? No matter who did this, even God can't save him now. Who the F asterisk CK in Northampton has the audacity to lay hands on Mr. Rogers? Zoe knew they were in deep trouble. She was keenly aware of Oswald's identity as the sole heir of the aristocratic. Rogers' family, not to mention his tens of billions of wealth, his network of connections ramified all over the military, political, and business circles. He was the true juggernaut of Northampton. Compared to the Rogers family, they were as small and insignificant as ants. She was glad that she had responded quickly. Otherwise, Oswald would have been dead by now and the consequences would have been disastrous. Don't mention any of this when we return, Zoe instructed. When they returned home, everyone looked at Levi incredulously. What happened? Did they make things hard for you? What about those title? Deeds and other stuff. Levi took out the IOU and tore it off in front of the mass. It's settled. You guys don't have to bother about it anymore, Levi said. Coldly. Hey? How did you do it? Aaron and the others were utterly perplexed. It was only then that Zoe noticed Levi had come through all those perils. Unscathed. Not only did he not lose a finger, he even got the IOU. I called the cops once I got a lead. The underground casino should be toast. By now, Levi said. It wasn't long before the police called. Not only was the underground casino taken down, but Aaron's matter was also revealed to be a fraud. All the suspects had been apprehended and the 70,000 that Aaron lost had been returned to him. Aaron hugged Levi with much excitement. Oh Levi, you're the best son-in-law we could ever have. You're a keeper. I can't believe you've settled this. Even Harry had to admit that Levi was useful this time. Caitlin, too, shed tears of joy. After all, the Lopez family was almost ruined. However, Zoe couldn't afford to be happy. The Rogers family definitely will not let this slide. The Protector Chapter 129 In Zoe's opinion, offending the Rogers family was much more of a crisis than this. Reckoning that they would probably exterminate the entire Lopez family for this, she told Levi everything as soon as they returned to Bayview Garden. Yeah, I know. Levi nodded. What should we do next? The Rogers family will soon find out about this. Zoe was stressed out to the extreme. Don't worry. You still got me. Levi smiled. Zoe wouldn't have believed it if Levi had said that in the past. However, the scene of Levi breaking in through the window today was etched. In her mind. It made her feel safe and secure, and she was no longer afraid to take on the world with Levi. Besides, if the Rogers family were to question them, she felt she could plead. With Pamela. At night, while flipping through different news channels on her phone in bed, Zoe came across a piece of intriguing news that happened on the streets of Northampton. There was a military helicopter parked directly on the square with someone boarding it without giving so much of a backward glance. For some reason, Zoe actually associated the helicopter with Levi. After all, the figure of the person in the image looked rather similar to him. Although it was fuzzy. Could it be Levi who came to Sheridan Hotel by helicopter and broke in? Through the window on the 30th floor? There is a possibility. Otherwise, what other explanation could there be? I'll have to look for witnesses when there's time to see if it was Levi who boarded that helicopter. Golden Villa, the top luxury villa in Northampton, covered an area of over 50 hectares. It was where the aristocratic Rogers family resided. That night, the atmosphere at home was somber and dead. After all, Oswald, the heir of the family, was almost beaten to death and was still unconscious. The entire Rogers family was infuriated. At the pitiful sight of his grandson, Glenn exuded an aura of overwhelming force. Glenn had once fought on the battlefield. 
although he had retired from the military, his bold and domineering aura was still palpable. At the end of his military career, Glenn had served as an instructor. He had taught many students and some of them could now be found in every major war zone, such as Stephen Shaw, the Colonel of Northampton 1st Metallic Regiment. Over the years, Stephen had been a great help to the Rogers family. Besides the Rogers family's own strength, it was the network of connections that Glenn had accumulated in the past, covering the military, political, and business circles, that had enabled the Rogers family to achieve their current level of success. Therefore, no matter what time of the day it was, his students were always at his beck and calls. Who did this? Glenn demanded. A gentle-looking middle-aged man stepped forward. He was Anthony. Oswald's father. Dad, it was Levi Garrison. This is a sticky business. Oswald was beaten up by him for making indecent moves toward Zoe at the hotel. But the point is, the underground casino has been taken down, and they had ratted out on Oswald. Anthony's expression was very unsightly. Is the underground casino really owned by Oswald? asked Glenn with a gloomy face. Anthony nodded. Yes, it is. Fred Turner from the criminal investigation team. Just called to confirm. Even the captain, Xavier Fields, knows about this. It's a devil of a tricky problem if we get back at Levi for this. What did Fred say? Glenn asked. They knew about the assault on Oswald, but they advised us to smooth things over and treat it as if it never happened, Anthony said. Now is not a good time to meet with a mishap when the Rogers group's 40th anniversary celebration is just around the corner. The impact is just too big, Glenn sighed. The Protector Chapter 130. However, Glenn changed the subject soon after. But look at my grandson. How can I stomach this? As you said, the celebration is around the corner. Let's get back at Levi once. It's over, someone suggested. Okay, we'll give him a few days to fool around, then I want him dead, no. Matter his background or power, said Glenn distantly. Then, having thought of something, he instructed, inform those students of mine to attend the celebration. Everyone felt a rush of excitement when they heard that. Some of Glenn's students served in the war zones, and others were in politics. In terms of age, they were about 30 to 40 years old and each of them was in the prime of their life. All held influential positions, like Stephen Shaw. It would have been a magnificent sight to see such people come together for the celebration. In the next few days, what Zoe had been worried about didn't happen in it. Made her jittery. Thereafter, she found out through connections that the casino belonged to Oswald, which explained why the Rogers family had left it at that. No wonder Levi was so confident. He knew the Rogers family wouldn't dare to make it public, Zoe mused, smiling. In fact, Levi didn't know about it at all and was still waiting for the Rogers family to take their revenge. He was shocked when he learned about it from Azure Dragon. It is said that the Rogers family will be having their 40th anniversary celebration a week later. I supposed they're afraid of the negativity it will bring about if they make a move on you now, Azure Dragon said. Levi tugged his lips into a smirk. 40th anniversary celebration? Nice, I'll be there by then to present them with the biggest gift they will ever have. The Rogers family must be exterminated. It wasn't only Oswald who directed the entire conspiracy back then, but the Rogers family was also part of it. By the way, sir, I've found out what you asked me to investigate. The Rogers family only possesses part of Levi Group's core technologies. Other core technologies have disappeared, but there are corresponding products on the market, Azure Dragon said. 
Inspired by what happened to Oswald, Levi felt that there were probably other forces who targeted him back then as well other than the garrison. Family and the Rogers family Levi Group, which was founded by Levi, was mainly involved in the fields of medicine and science and technology. At that time, he had turned the volume up to 11 and broke into the market, and was reckoned to have taken advantage of many people. The core technology developed by his team was especially terrifying, as it had elevated Levi's net worth by billions within a year. Many people had coveted Levi Group's core technology, and even more. People wanted him dead. Hence, Levi had asked Azure Dragon to find out who was possessing the core technology. Just as he thought, the Rogers family only controlled part of it, and there were others who also took part in plotting his downfall. Keep searching according to those online products. Levi ordered. Even if the whole Northampton was turned upside down, revenge was his ultimate goal. For the past few days, Aaron and Caitlin had been very nice to Levi. Perhaps they felt guilty, but for Zoe's sake, Levi shrugged it off. When Levi came home at night, Abigail surprisingly showed up at their door. Levi, I've got great news. Abigail beamed. Levi put on a confused expression. Great news? What? Are you getting married? Pfft. I don't even have a boyfriend. Who am I supposed to marry? You. Abigail said, eyeing Zoe with hidden intentions in her words. Then what's the great news? Say it, Levi said. The Protector Chapter 131 Abigail chuckled, deliberately holding him in suspense. Abigail's favorite celebrities are coming to Northampton, Zoe piped up. This girl has been yapping about it all night. Abigail glared at her. Why did you say it? Levi frowned. That's all. Abigail nodded with pride. Yeah. My idols are coming. How is that not great news? Oh. Levi walked away. Abigail went after him. Are you upset? Lame. What do you mean, Lame? One of them is pretty, and the other is handsome. Here, let me show you. Their pictures. This is Yelda Zamora. She's not only pretty, but her singing is superb. She's the hottest female star out there. Abigail showed Levi some pictures through her phone. Levi flicked a glance. So so. She's worse than your sister though. And this is Zach Copeland. Look, isn't he handsome? Levi pushed her out and closed the door behind him. That's more like it. Levi had never been interested in celebrities. It was always the soldiers who sacrificed and struggled for the glory of the country but it was these celebrities who received the honor and enjoyed special privileges instead. No one knew his brothers had died for the country and that their bodies had been left in the wilderness. But these celebrities made it to the news with just a headache and elicited pity from the public with just a paper cut on their finger from filming. While the martyr's grave was left collecting dust, an entertainer's anecdotes were known to all. It was based on this standpoint that Levi couldn't get himself to like any celebrities. Outside the room, Abigail went to harass Zoe again. Zoe, do you know they were invited to Rogers Group's 40th anniversary celebration? Uncle said. That I can finally meet them on that day, she squealed. Oh. Zoe gave a noncommittal reply. I'll get some more of those invitation cards. Why don't you come with Levi? Abigail was excited. Okay, Zoe said. We'll be there. The next day, with time to spare, Zoe went shopping with Abigail and Levi. After walking around a few malls in a row, Abigail and Zoe bought nothing. But on the contrary, the ordeal of having to go shopping had tormented Levi, the god of war. Shopping with women is so much more tiring than killing enemies on the battlefield. At noon, Levi eventually decided firmly not to continue shopping anymore, so he said, let's eat first. 
or else I'm not moving. Unable to argue with Levi, Abigail, and Zoe could only agree to eat first. That's Northampton Center up ahead. Let's go over there. Levi was really exhausted. Arriving at the Northampton Center, they were surprised to see the crowd that was two times more than usual. Many people were dressed uniformly, rushing in a direction, and holding what seemed like a light stick in their hands. Seeing the crowd, Abigail was ravishing with joy. God, my idols are here. I can't believe they're having an event at Northampton Center today. Abigail dragged Levi and Zoe to the front. As there was an elevator just ahead, Levi held his peace. It was only after coming to the center of the mall did Levi realize how scary it was. There was a stage at the front, which he supposed the celebrities would show up there, and many people behind the stage, where celebrities including Yelda Zamora and Zach Copeland were on standby. They were here to take part in some business activities to earn some quick money before attending the Rogers family's 40th anniversary celebration. However, the worst part was that there were thousands of people gathering around the stage. The Protector Chapter 132 Not only that, but there were also people around the guardrail on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th and up to the 10th floor. Levi couldn't imagine just how many fans had gathered today. Are there at least a thousand of them? The fans were chanting their idol's name like believers who had been brainwashed, and Abigail joined in as well when she arrived. More than a hundred security guards were guarding around the stage to keep the fanatical fans outside. Even the stage was cordoned off with barricade tapes. Levi couldn't stand such a scene. Irritated, he pulled Zoe's hands and walked straight toward the elevator. Where's Abigail? Before he knew it, Abigail had already vanished from his sight. She said she's going to meet her idols and told us to eat first. She'll look for us later, Zoe said. Okay. Levi and Zoe were about to enter the elevator when a few security guards stopped them. No. You can't take the elevator, the security guard said coldly, stretching his arm. Why? Levi's forehead puckered. Unauthorized persons are not allowed to use the elevator today besides staff members and the celebrity teams, the security guard explained. Levi snickered. So you're saying that celebrities have special privileges? Yes. To ensure the safety of the celebrities, you guys are forbidden to take the elevator, the security guard said ruthlessly. Come on. Let's try the escalators. Levi and Zoe came to the escalators, but the security guards stopped them again for the same reason. Levi looked up to see that all the escalators had been cordoned off from the first floor to the tenth floor. Just then, Zoe picked up a call from work and took off, leaving Levi with no choice but to eat alone. That area is separated from this one, said the security guard, pointing at the opposite side. You can take the escalator over there. Levi looked around briefly. I can reach the elevator on the opposite side if I pass through the stage area. He wandered to the front stage, planning to walk through there. Heedless of others, Levi crossed over the barricade tape directly. What are you doing? Stand there. Stop right there. Suddenly, more than a dozen security guards rushed over, touching the electric batons behind their backs and locking their eyes on Levi. Levi chuckled. Chill. I'm just trying to get to the elevator on the opposite side. I promise I'll stay out. Of your way. Get back, the head of security barked. No one is allowed to go through here. Didn't you see the barricade tape? The celebrities who are here today are all A-list celebrities. Can you afford to bear the responsibility if something goes wrong, another security guard questioned. Levi sneered, a mall is considered a public place, no? Why aren't tourists allowed to pass? You can on usual days. But not today, the head of security said. You people are hogging public resources, are you not? Do celebrities have any special privileges for 
you to obstruct a person's passage in a public place? Levi asked in a low voice. Yes. They have the privilege. Their performance fee costs tens of millions. That's the privilege, the security guard said. What if I insist to cross over? Levi sneered. This place has been cordoned off. You can try. A dozen more security guards came, making it over thirty of them glaring at Levi. Levi flashed a cruel smile. Fine, a blockade, eh? He fished for his phone and dialed a number. Kieran, bring your troops to Northampton Center. I want to lay siege to this place. The Protector Chapter 133 How are you calling this a blockade? I'll show you what a real blockade looks like. Anger overpowered Levi. Otherwise, he wouldn't have troubled Kieran. Seeing how Levi was putting on airs about laying siege to Northampton Center, the security guards laughed themselves silly. Is he crazy? Calling the troops to lay siege to this place? Who does he think he is? A high-ranking officer of the war zone? Show us what you got then. The commotion over here had soon attracted the celebrity team's attention as a few celebrity managers came over, asking what was going on. The ringleader was Monica, yelled as Amora's manager. She was the top celebrity manager in the entertainment industry, who had entirely arranged the event today on her own. In another word, she had the final say. Monica shot Levi an icy stare. What is your problem? Can't you see that this place has been blockaded? Levi gave a half-suppressed laugh. Who gave you the right to do that? Monica froze at that question. It was a question which she didn't know and had never thought about the answer. After all, it had been normal all along for celebrities to go out with bodyguards, occupy a place and cordon off an area. So it became a default rule. Celebrities had an inherently noble identity with a very high net worth. And therefore, no one was allowed to come near to them. So much so that roads would be blocked off to prevent pedestrians from passing by when they were shooting variety shows. It was as if this privilege was given to them in silent acquiescence, and the passerby would consciously abide by it. Thus, they were completely caught off guard and didn't know how to answer when Levi raised that question. Standing here today are all A-list celebrities of Arudaya. They're noble and worth billions. They can enjoy this privilege. If anyone is allowed to come and go freely at this time, then what's the difference between our artists and you ordinary people? Monica snapped. Levi laughed. So you mean to say that celebrities are people of status? Yes, you can put it that way. After all, what they did is beyond what you can think of. It's only right for them to enjoy this privilege, said Monica solemnly. Don't you even think about creating trouble here or we'll hand you over to the police? She further threatened. Bloody F asterisk CK. Levi cursed. I just want to ride the elevator and grab a meal, but you guys are here. Blabbering on and on about blockading this and that. If that's what you want, I'll show you what a real blockade looks like. Monica and the others laughed at Levi's bravado. A real blockade? What the hell is a real blockade? Are you kidding me? Monica was about to call security to kick him out when the crowd went wild at the few celebrities. Walking over. Monica immediately went up to them. The two stars in the lead looked very dazzling. They could be distinguished at first glance, even among a sea of celebrities. The man, whose skin was fair, was decked out in a white suit. He exuded a feminine aura that was most in line with the contemporary standard of a hunky boy next door. As for the woman, she was wearing a long white dress that accentuated her petite and sexy figure, and as she flaunted her gorgeous face, she looked like an angel descending to the earth. They were none other than the popular stars, Yelda Zamora and Zach Copeland. Monica, what's the matter? Yelda asked. 
This fella insisted on trespassing, and after we stopped him, he said he wants to blockade this place. Monica sneered. The Protector Chapter 134 Just let him go over there, Monica, Yelda said softly. It's no big deal. No, Yelda. What if he has evil intentions? Look at him. I have no reason not to suspect that he's coming for us. Zack suddenly spoke, his voice cold. Where's security? What are you waiting for? Seize him. Zack was especially sick of such a fan who tended to act up to attract their idol's attention. To him, Levi was that perfect example. Yelda looked at Levi and said, just let him go. Who knows if he has something urgent to attend to. Humph, no way. This is dangerous for us. Don't you know how valuable our identities are? What if he means malice? This is why the place is sealed off. To guard against people like him. Zack was uncompromising. Just as the security guards were about to make their move on Levi, he took out his phone and bellowed. Kieran, where the F asterisk CK are you? We're already in position, sir. Initiating Northampton Center's lockdown. Kieran's voice was heard. Everyone could hear their conversation clearly. Zack and Monica laughed out loud. Who are you trying to scare here? Who do you think you are to lock down Northampton Center? If you can lock down Northampton Center, I, Zack Copeland, will eat a turd. At this moment in time, something big was happening outside of Northampton Center. Every pedestrian on the square in front of Northampton Center stopped to look up at the sky. There were at least a dozen helicopters hovering above Northampton Center building. Whoosh! The helicopter hatch opened. One by one, heavily armed guards came down, landed on their feet and lined up in formation, heading for the interior of Northampton Center. Attention, everyone! The lockdown of Northampton Center is now in effect. Clear out as soon as possible. Attention, this is not a drill, a deafening sound was heard from the loudspeakers of every helicopter. The crowd was in a complete state of panic as they were curious about what was happening. Inside one of the helicopters, a soldier was operating the computer. He quickly hacked in and took control of Northampton Center's PAW system. Despite the warning outside, it was inaudible inside Northampton Center. Zack and Monica were still making fun of Levi. Well, what are you waiting for? Where are your men? God, this is hilarious. Buzz. 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 A loud noise reverberated from the PAW system inside the mall, making everyone stop all there. Movements to look up. Attention, everyone. This is Yash Warner speaking, the captain of Kieran's Special Operations Force of Northampton. We're imposing a lockdown on Northampton Center right now. Please cooperate with us. The announcement made through the loudspeakers was played over and over again. Before anyone could react, the sound of uniform marching was heard from behind them. Thump. 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 Everyone looked back to see heavily armed guards, marching in in groups of tens, surrounding them. From all sides. Freeze. Freeze. The security guards were all put to the ground in no time. Above the high level was a guard who came descending from the sky with a rope tied to his body. It turned out that they had attacked from above. All the security guards on the other floors had been subdued at the same time. The Protector Chapter 135 Everyone got a nasty shock, including Zack, Yelda, Monica and the rest of the celebrity team and Security Guards Levi was just talking about cordoning off this place, and it really happened. And they're all from the Special Operations Regiment. The next moment, Levi ripped off all the annoying barricade tapes before their eyes and replaced them with military ones. The barricade tape the security guards had put up from before was to barricade the public from getting near to the artists, 
but the point of the military tape now was to encircle the celebrity team. Everyone huddled together, shivering in fear. So what if they had fame and status? They were as scared as ever to encounter the Special Operations Regiment. Right then, Yash Warner, whose voice was heard from over the PAW system, showed up holding a loud hailer in his hand, still warning the people, but at the same time mollifying their anxiety by telling them it was just a simple lockdown. Yash was armed to the teeth and had several grenades hanging on his chest. Following behind him were dozens of well-trained soldiers who were jogging up to the front of the stage, standing before Levi amidst the horrified looks of the cotter of celebrities. Reporting, sir. Yash shouted, giving a military salute. Yash Warner, the captain of Kieran Special Operations Force of Northampton, is here to protect the chief. Awaiting your orders, sir. A deathly silence filled the atmosphere. Monica, Zack, Yelda, and the security guards regarded Levi with an astonished look. Chief? What? He's their chief? And a very young one at that? Levi glanced at Yash. This is great. Kieran's hellish training is really something. These ordinary soldiers were as good as the Imperial Guards, despite the short training period. M.M that was fast. Levi nodded, then looked at Monica, Zack, and the others. This is what you called a blockade. Do you understand now? Everyone was drenched with sweat at Levi's words. They were so frightened that they almost passed. Out. However, one thing they could make out for sure was that Levi was the chief of the war zonies. No wonder he was so full of himself when he said he was going to cordon off Northampton Center. It turned out that he really had the power to do so. Zack's face darkened as he remembered what he said about eating a turd if Levi could cordon off this place. Levi's identity was unexpected. Who would have thought that a passerby who was just going to grab a meal turned out to be the chief? Who could summon the Special Operations Regiment with just a word? Everyone shuddered when they noticed Levi's stern gaze on them. According to your logical thinking, I should be as noble as you, right? Levi sneered. Monica and Zack nodded fervently. Yes, yes, yes. You're definitely someone of noble status, chief. Then should I also enjoy special privileges and occupy public resources wantonly? Levi asked. Definitely. What are you talking about, chief? You can do whatever you want. Naturally. Monica and Zack became docile and obedient, wanting to make friends with the chief. But Levi raised his voice the next second. Does that mean I should bring along a troop with me to cordon off this place just to have a meal at the mall? Hey! Levi's sudden rage had Monica and the rest trembling. Privilege? There are so many people with privileges. If everyone behaves like you, wouldn't it be a mess? The Protector Chapter 136 It's not wrong for you to organize an event, but is it necessary to block all the places? There are so many people and not everyone is here for you. They're like me, who came to eat and buy clothes. Why do we have to wait for hours because of your event? If we're talking about privileges, what do you think about only continuing your event after I Cordon off this place and finish my meal. Faced with Levi's questioning, Monica and the rest looked down and dared not speak a word. All this while they had only considered the safety of the artists and their own privileges when holding events that they had disregarded the problems of other people's livelihood. Perhaps ordinary people were simply not qualified for their consideration in their eyes. We were wrong, Chief. We're aware of our own mistakes and we shouldn't have occupied public resources. We will definitely think before organizing any events in the future. Monica took the initiative to apologize. Levi gave the crowd a perfunctory glance. Cancel the event. Yash Warner, take them back and have everyone write a 10,000 word letter of remorse before releasing them. What? Everyone was stunned when they heard that. Are you kidding me? 
you're asking these high and mighty celebrities to write a 10,000 word letter of remorse? However, at Levi's ferocious gaze, everyone lowered their heads. Lastly, Levi looked at Zack. I think I'll not watch you eat turd. It's too disgusting. Zack was badly shaken. It definitely wasn't a good thing to be remembered by such a big shot. After Levi had left, Yash fell back with his men and the celebrities had left as well. The mall was soon restored to order, and Levi had his meal as he wished. Very soon after, Abigail found Levi. Levi, you totally missed it. A big chief wanted to have a meal, but the place was sealed off, so he put this place on lockdown in a fit of rage. He even took away my idols and they supposedly have to write a letter of remorse. How tragic! As Abigail was among the crowd, she only had a general idea of what transpired just now, with most of it having heard from other people. They deserve it, Levi said coldly. But I heard the chief is only in his twenties. Do you think there's such a young chief, Levi? Abigail queried. I mean, generally speaking, shouldn't they be in their forties and fifties by the time they earn their qualifications and get to the top? Everything is fair and just in the military. Anyone with the capability can become a chief. It's normal to have a high-ranking position in your twenties, Levi said. Oh, I see. Abigail continued with regret, I'm just sad that I couldn't meet my idols this time. But my uncle has invited me to the 40th anniversary celebration. You should come too, Levi. Hearing that it was the anniversary celebration of the Rogers family, Levi agreed. Sure, no problem. At the training base, Yash had just released the celebrities who had finished writing their letters of remorse and was about to report to Kieran when he bumped into Stephen Shaw along the way. Hey Stephen, what are you doing here? Yash and Stephen were once soldiers of the same class, and they studied together later. So they had a close relationship. Mr. Rogers' family business is holding a 40th anniversary celebration, said Stephen, taking out a gilded invitation. He invited us over and I'm here to give you your invitation. Yash accepted the invitation. He still remembers us. It turned out that Stephen and Yash were Glenn's students. Yet. Many comrades will be there for the celebration, just to see Mr. Rogers, Stephen said. Okay, let's go together, Yash said. The Protector Chapter 137 Stephen smiled, looking a little embarrassed. Yash could tell at a glance that Stephen had a favor to ask of him. What is it, Stephen? There's no need to be polite between us. I'll be straightforward then. I spoke on the phone with Mr. Rogers just now. He told me to ask you if you could invite Kieran to attend the Rogers family's grand celebration, Stephen said. Surely, it was Glenn's idea. As for inviting the God of War, the Rogers family wasn't qualified, and thus Glenn dared not even think about it. But he wanted to give Kieran a try. Kieran was one of the five great kings of war under the command of the god of war. It would be the Rogers family's greatest honor if he accepted the invitation. It was for an assignment that I came into contact with the god of war, Azure Dragon, and the others. There's no substantial relationship or whatsoever. Stephen added. But you and Kieran are different. He's equivalent to your master. Yasha's expression changed slightly. Since Mr. Rogers said so, I'll give it a try. Shortly after, Yash came to report at Kieran's command post. Are they gone? Kieran asked without looking up, his legs on the table. Yes, sir. But Yash stood rooted to the spot after finishing his report. What is it? Kieran looked at him in puzzlement. Don't just stand there. Say it. Reporting, sir. Yash straightened his back. My instructor, Mr. Glenn Rogers, wishes to invite you to the Rogers family 40th anniversary celebration. Oswald Rogers, 
that Roger's family? Kieran asked. He had heard it from Azure Dragon before that the Rogers family was the enemy of the God of War. Yes, sir. Yash nodded. Although it seemed like a slim chance, at least he tried. Okay, I'll go. Kieran accepted the invitation. This is great. Thank you, sir. Yash saluted. Immediately, the Rogers family learned that Kieran would be attending their grand celebration. Glenn was all smiles. Haha, ha, God bless the Rogers family. That would be the greatest honor for us if Kieran shows up. Ha ha ha. He's the God of War's right hand man, it's equivalent to us having a little something going. On with the God of War. Our status will definitely rise after this celebration. Yeah, Dad, Anthony agreed. Although we're one of the top ten wealthiest families in North Hampton, we're still at the bottom of the list after all. We can definitely move up a few places after this celebration. The Rogers family were so excited that they clenched their fists. The celebration was good news to them as well. In layman's terms, it was very likely that their dividends would increase from 50 million to 100 million. Pass on my orders, said Glenn, looking at everyone. Ramp up the publicity. And spread the news. That the King of War, Kieran, will be our guest of honor for this celebration. The attendance list of the Rogers family's grand celebration spread like wildfire in Northampton and seeing that the most honored guest was none other than Kieran, the God of War's right-hand man, many powerful families in Northampton were envious. So what if they were rich? And so what if they had connections all over Arudaya? None of those was equal to Kieran's attendance at the celebration. Dad, Pamela's daughter, Abigail, wants her brother-in-law and sister to attend as well. As you know. Those are Levi and Zoe, and so I said yes, said Anthony to Glenn. Glenn patted Anthony's shoulders. You did the right thing. We'll show Levi just how great the Rogers family is. Glenn chortled. The Protector Chapter 138 In fact, we should thank Levi for this, Anthony added. We only possess part of the core technology. Developed by his team, but we've made a net profit of at least 20 billion in the past six years. Haven't we? Yeah, that kid sure was capable. Even the richest man in Northampton remembers him. Glenn. Withdrew his smile and continued coldly but I can't stand him beating my grandson to a pulp like this. I must hit him after the celebration. Right, the overseas experts and doctors are arriving soon, aren't they? Glenn asked as a thought. Occurred to him. Make sure Oswald attends the celebration. The Rogers family had hired ten foreign experts to treat Oswald to make sure that he could attend the celebration. Dad, answered Anthony. They'll arrive today at 12 midnight. Five days will be enough. Okay, bring them here and make sure nothing goes wrong, Glenn said. Don't worry, Dad. I'll pick them up myself. At this moment, Levi was at the manor where Azure Dragon and the others lived. Kieran had just informed Levi about the invitation he received from the Rogers family. M.M., you did great. I'm going to as an ordinary guest. But you, you're the guest of honor, kiddo. Levi teased. Our little Kieran will be the most important guest at the grand celebration, Azure Dragon joined in. Stop teasing me, please. Kieran said immediately. Right then, the valiant and heroic Phoenix came forward, saying respectfully, reporting, Sir. I just... Received news that the Rogers family has hired ten foreign experts to treat Oswald Rogers. They'll be landing at the private zone of Northampton Airport at 12 tonight. They're here to treat Oswald. Levi's expression darkened. Yes, sir. The Rogers family wants to make sure that Oswald attends the grand celebration, so they invited top medical experts from all over the world, Phoenix said. Levi raised his arm to look at the time. 
it was a quarter past ten. Let's go and take them down, said Levi, rising to his feet. The nerve to treat Oswald. Northampton Airport had always been busy. But tonight, there were black cars stopping before the private passageway, headed by a Rolls Royce. With dozens of hefty men in suits standing next to it, all of them looking aggressive. Coming down from the Rolls Royce was Anthony. They were here to pick up the foreign medical experts. Such a grand scene was only in line with the Rogers family's reputation as it brought about an uproar. Among the crowd, Anthony glanced at his watch. It was exactly twelve. Okay, the experts are coming out soon. We'll leave immediately once we pick them up. Anthony instructed, his men standing by sternly. Shortly after, a team of twenty came out from the private passageway. This included the foreign experts and their assistants, as well as a good deal of equipment. Welcome, Mr. Jeffrey and team. Anthony greeted. This way please. With a wave of his arm, Anthony's men took over the medical team's equipment and loaded them into the car, and the medical team was ushered into their respective rides. Chuff! 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 However, at this moment, there was a rumbling sound in the sky. It was the sound of a propeller spinning at high speed. Thump! 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 Rays of bright light shone on the car and the people's faces from mid-air, lighting the place up like daylight. In the face of such strong light, everyone was so shaken that they couldn't open their eyes. The Protector Chapter 139 The sound in their ears was getting louder like thunder. The fierce wind the propeller produced was raging and everyone was almost blown away. Only then did everyone see clearly that those were helicopters in the air. After taking a closer look at the symbol, everyone's heart sank. Those were helicopters from the war zone. Everyone, listen and stay wherever you are. A loud voice was heard from the loudspeaker. Thereafter, they saw men after men in suits of different skin colors, and height about a head taller than the Rogers family's guards, sliding down the helicopter's ladders. The hefty men in suits who landed and seized the foreign medical team directly from the Rogers family were none other than the mercenaries under James' leadership. Along with the medical equipment that had been loaded in the car, everyone and everything was loaded into the helicopters instead. Anthony and the rest could only look on as the mercenaries took away the medical team and equipment from them. Firstly, the Rogers family had no ability to fight against these mercenaries. Secondly, Anthony was afraid of these symbols on the helicopters. Chuff! 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 It was not only until the helicopters had left that Anthony came back to his senses. What just happened? These mercenaries are well trained, and it took them only one minute to raid the place. It was so fast that we couldn't even react in time. What do we do now, Mr. Rogers, the head of the bodyguards asked. Go home. What else can we do? Anthony made a sour face. Returning to the Rogers residence, Glenn was shocked when he learned about the episode at the airport. You didn't stop them? Glenn asked. They're just a bunch of foreign bodyguards. But Anthony shook his head. Dad, listen to me. That group of people was well trained. You can tell. From the way they glide down the helicopters that they must have served in the military. I suspect. They're mercenaries. Glenn looked dazed. Mercenaries? But I don't know anyone who dares to deploy mercenaries in. Northampton. There is one. Didn't Rick Garrison hire some mercenaries a while ago? They were detained after the. Incident and have yet to be released. I think it's them. Anthony said. So you mean to say that it's Rick who is using this group of mercenaries? Glenn already had an answer in his mind. Anthony nodded. Most probably so. Those symbols on the helicopters are military symbols. Who would dare to use these helicopters? Glenn was puzzled. Is there anything wrong with these doctors? Why were they detained? 
We don't know and didn't dare to ask. On the other side, Levi had directly sent these doctors out of Arudaya. You want to treat Oswald? No way. For the next few days, the Rogers family had been asking around to find out the reasons, but to no avail. They found nothing solid about these mercenaries. Could they be coming for Oswald, suggested Leo, Oswald's uncle. Glenn and Anthony glared at him. What nonsense are you spouting? How could such a great person hold grudges against Oswald? The only use of these experts is to treat Oswald. Isn't it obvious that they were detained because the other party didn't want them to treat him? Leo analyzed. It's only Levi who doesn't want Oswald to be treated in the whole of Northampton, Glenn retorted. Are you suggesting that Levi is the god of war? Of course not. How could Levi be the god of war? That's too ridiculous. Leo shook his head. The Protector Chapter 140 Oswald is not getting any better. I don't think he can make it to the celebration, Glenn sighed. Anthony knew the importance of the celebration this time. It was basically a guarantee that Oswald would become the heir if he attended the celebration. Dad, can we postpone the celebration? asked Anthony, hoping fervently for his son to attend it. His words had Glenn's anger spiked. How can we postpone such a big event? What do you think my students will think about us? What if we anger Kieran? No, we can't postpone the celebration. Rogers Group's 40th anniversary celebration was just around the corner, and almost the whole of Northampton was aware of it. Everyone was proud to have the invitation to the grand celebration. Many people had even sent pictures of the invitation to their friends to show off their status of being acquainted with the Rogers. One could see how well the Rogers family's publicity had been done. The night before the celebration, Abigail specially came to deliver Levi and Zoe their invitations. Because of what happened to Oswald, Zoe had been worried to this day. She dared not attend the Rogers family's celebration, lest they flew into a rage at the sight of them. If you won't go, I'll go. Naturally, Levi wanted to go and Abigail was very happy about that because he would be hers alone if Zoe refused to go. You must watch over Levi. Zoe urged. He has beef with the Rogers family. Don't worry, Zoe. Grandpa loves me very much. No one can touch him, Abigail said. Aaron and Caitlin didn't receive the invitation. In Pamela's opinion, they had no rights to attend the celebration. The next day, the City Convention and Exhibition Center became the venue for this grand celebration. The street in front of the City Convention and Exhibition Center was taken over by the Rogers family. For the day, and a variety of banners and flying balloons were hung on both sides of the dozen-kilometer-long road. The Rogers family had spent a tremendous amount of money to decorate the venue. They sure were willing to spend that money. After all, even the invitation cards were gilded with gold. Not to mention the dozens of A-list celebrities and countless influencers who were invited. The parking lot in front of the venue was filled with rows of luxury cars. The Rogers family's network of connections was not to be frowned upon. Everyone who attended the celebration was wealthy and respectable. The Lopez family was simply out of their league. Abigail and Levi arrived at the venue and made their way in easily after showing their invitations. As the celebration hadn't officially started yet, everyone was waiting at the lounge where a buffet was being served. Levi and Abigail looked for a seat and had just sat down when a voice was heard from behind. Levi, is that you? Levi looked back to see a graceful woman in a long burgundy dress. She had a voluptuous figure, slender legs, and a charming and seductive temperament. The woman was looking at Levi with her doe-like eyes. Levi recognized the woman as May Holland, his and Morris business partner in the early days who had both the capability and the creativity to succeed. Their startup team was riding high at first, but many had opted out when they started to lose money, leaving only Levi, Morris, and another girl. 
Among those who opted out was May. It really is Levi. Another voice was heard from the side. Standing before Levi right now were four other people. They were Yo-Yo Peterson, Leon Watson, Hanson Wood, and Bryce Chad, his startup partners from the past. Yo-Yo was that only girl who stayed on while the others had opted out. When Levi's startup business became successful later on, they had wanted to rejoin, but he rejected them. Levi could still remember how Leon and the other two guys had come to laugh at him on the day of his imprisonment. The Protector Chapter 141 The ridicule of his classmates and his partner's betrayal that day had left a deep scar in Levi's memory. Etched deep in his heart were the faces of Leon and the others. These people were unforgettable. Furthermore, Yo-Yo had refused to back out after their business venture had failed that year. Nonetheless, she had later gone on to take care of her family's business. After that, Levi had cut all ties with them, so he was unaware of their current statuses. However, after leaving the team that year, some of them had gone on to start their own businesses and had become quite successful. Yo-Yo and May had done the best. Both of them ran companies with market values of one billion. Leon's group did quite well too. The three of them were each worth several hundred million. After all, at that time, only high achievers could be partners with Levi. Even so, compared to Levi, they were subpar. No matter how hard they tried, there was an insurmountable gap between them and the Levi from six years ago. Later, when they heard that Levi was in prison, Leon and his friends were so happy that they went to gloat over his predicament. Levi greeted them, Yo-Yo, May, you came too. Before the girls could reply, Hansen and Bryce said, Why can't we come? Yo-Yo and May are the young elites of Northampton Enterprises, and they're worth more than one billion each. Our net worth may not be as impressive, but we're still worth several hundred million. We were officially invited by the Rogers family. Leon sneered. That's right. We are definitely qualified to come. Conversely, your eligibility is questionable. You have just been released from prison, and you don't run any company. You are penniless. How did you get in? The three ganged up to deride Levi. Glimpsing the invitation card in Levi's hands, Bryce snatched it from him. Miss Zoe? Ha ha ha. Now, I know. You got in using your wife's invitation card. Bryce laughed at his expense. They were simply stating facts. The name written on the card was Zoe's. Leon chuckled humorlessly. It turns out that you depend on your wife. I heard that Zoe recently received a promising contract, which allows her to barely qualify for this event. Hansen mocked, Northampton's best. Mr. Levi Garrison, is now depending on a woman. Despite their relentless insults, Levi did not show any reaction. In his eyes, these clowns were totally worthless. They were nobodies compared to the Garrison family, let alone today's giant the Rogers family. Nevertheless, to Yo-Yo and May, Levi was but a shadow of what he had been. In their opinion, the leader who used to be invincible and was always in control had turned out to be a pathetic bum after six years in prison. Not only was he depending on a woman for support, he had not challenged nor retorted his tormentors. Verbal Abuse How full of life and motivation was Levi in his glory days when he founded his business? At that time, Yo-Yo had been deeply in love with Levi. Nothing could make her leave him, not even his failure in his undertakings. She had wanted to stay with him for always. Those days, Levi's every word and every move had won May's heart. May was daring and proactive. Many times, she had pursued and even tried to seduce him. Nevertheless, she had been rejected by Levi each time. That was the real reason she left when the business failed. No matter how times had changed, this was the man they had loved so deeply. The two were deeply moved after seeing Levi's current state. 
however, what they felt was immense luck and joy. After being rejected, May had left in order to improve herself. Her goal was to succeed so that Levi would regret his decision. Yo-Yo's feelings were not so different. If Levi had been successful and lived happily ever after with Zoe, she would be heartbroken. However, what she felt now was unbridled joy. The Protector Chapter 142 The bottom line was that the less successful Levi was, the more joy and satisfaction they would feel. As long as Levi failed and deteriorated, that would prove that their decision to leave him was right. It proved that Levi was unworthy of them. They looked at each other, and their thoughts were more or less the same. They were different from Leon and his two friends in that they felt emotional but they would not ridicule or taunt Levi. Enough, you guys, shut up. Do not forget that we were partners before. Even though Levi rejected our joint venture back then, he helped us a lot, May spoke up for Levi. She was full of authority, speaking like a queen. With one sentence, she stopped the trio's taunts. Yo-Yo was different from May in that she gave support quietly. Are you doing all right? She had a lot that she wanted to say to him but could only force out four simple words. Yeah, I am all right, Levi replied. Yo-Yo looked at Levi, and a myriad of emotions surged through her heart. Where is the man who was in control of everything? So it turns out that time can really change everything. It can prove that my opinion at that time was wrong. Time proved that my parents were right when they said that Levi's surge of energy will die off and that he is not worthy of me. It's true, then. Everything is now proven to be true. Hansen looked at Levi and laughed, Levi, I would like to ask you, how do you feel now, looking at Yo-Yo and May who are each worth a billion? I'm certain you regret rejecting them, don't you? Hansen chortled. Bryce said, aside from the fact that Yo-Yo and May are doing much better than Zoe, Zoe's company nearly went bankrupt not long ago. Leon laughed and said, you regret it, don't you? If Yo-Yo or May helps you now, you will definitely make a comeback. However, you don't even have this opportunity. You are not worthy of them. Hearing all this, neither Yo-Yo nor May said a word. May stood with her arms folded, like a goddess on a pedestal. If Levi were to confess to her now, she would ruthlessly reject him. She would even reply, there was a time when you couldn't be bothered with me. I'm not the same. Now. Levi, you are not worthy of me. Yo-Yo, too, felt the same, more or less. If she had another chance, she would not love Levi again. Seeing this scene, Abigail came over and held Levi's arm. She sneered, You are, after all, just ordinary, short-sighted folk. My brother-in-law is still amazing. In his eyes, you are nothing but tiny little ants. That's why he does not bother to reply to your insults. Abigail might not know everything about Levi, but she did have an inkling of his true ability. Someone who offhandedly named her as the owner of a 50 million home and just as casually bought. The revolving restaurant in Northampton Center was not someone to be derided by the likes of May. And her buddies. Ha ha ha. Levi, is this your sis-in-law? What a lovely girl. May smiled and looked at Levi contemptuously. It was so difficult to start a business now more than a hundred times harder than six years ago. If Levi were to try to reach her level now, it would take him a whole lifetime to catch up. May laughed, saying, Old friend, I heard that you are not working yet. If you would like to, come and work for me as a head technician. I'll give you a handsome salary. She imagined the man who once rejected her at his pinnacle of success working under her. Just the thought filled her with pleasure. Levi rejected her offer, saying, it's not necessary. After today, the Levi group and the garrison. Families companies will be under me again along with the Rogers family's businesses. I'll have a job. Then. 
After hearing Levi's claims, the whole group was stunned into silence. The Protector Chapter 143 When Levi said this, not only did May and the others doubt him, even Abigail found it unbelievable. She knew her brother-in-law was amazing. However, taking back Levi Group and the Rogers family business was too far-fetched. How is that possible? Even the Levi from six years ago, who was at the pinnacle of success, could not achieve this. In the face of the Rogers family, he was no more than an ant. Ha ha ha! A few seconds later, Leon and the others burst out laughing. May and Yo-Yo looked at each other and laughed aloud as well. This was the most ridiculous joke they had ever heard all their lives. A scumbag who just got out of prison is going to wipe out the Rogers family, who is worth tens of billions in industries? Yo-Yo and May knew Levi only too well because they had worked together before. Levi had always loved to brag. He always casually mentioned doing something impossible. Later on, he would really achieve it. Nevertheless, that was the Levi from six years ago who could move mountains. He had the ability, the motivation, and the connections. Everything had been as easy as ABC for him. However, the Levi they knew today had nothing. There was no way he could do anything amazing or incredible, least of all, wrestling tens of billions. Worth of businesses from the hands of the Rogers family. This was just impossible. It was as possible as the sun rising from the west. In other words, only in his dreams. May did not point out the obvious, instead, she congratulated him with a smile, I congratulate you in advance. Take back the Levi group and take down the Rogers family. The others laughed and agreed, that's right, Mr. Garrison, soon you'll be worth 50 billion. Just help us out a bit when you succeed, anything from 500 million to 1 billion would do. None of them thought Levi would take it seriously. Levi told May, thank you. When the time comes, I'll consider you for joint ventures. Yo-Yo looked at Levi with compassion in her eyes. The Levi in front of her now was simply too pitiable. From the pinnacle of pride and success, he had fallen so low as to console himself with tall tales. It was so tragic and sad. In the twenty or so years of her life, Yo-Yo had never misjudged any person or situation. Her only exception was Levi. She thought he was a winner, but he turned out to be a loser. Leon patted Levi on the shoulder and sneered, Garrison, don't give up. We have faith in your ability. Truth be told, the Rogers family mastered a small part of the core medical technology you developed in the past, and it was so incredible. Did you know that with your technology, they made more than 20 billion? May smiled, it was really incredible. It had the ability to transform a whole clan from rags to riches. May looked at Levi, Levi, my offer to hire you as the head of my technical department is genuine and sincere. You have the ability, but you've lost your motivation. I believe in you, and I can give you a future. That's right. You can come to me too. The Rogers family really made a fortune from your technical skills in the medical field. Even Yo-Yo was interested in hiring Levi. Pushing this man off his pedestal and then stepping on him was really enjoyable. Yo-Yo, what are you talking about? Suddenly, a stern voice was heard. A tall man wearing a suit and leather shoes appeared. He wore an unhappy expression on his face. It was Luke, a senior staff member of the Rogers family group, the super henchman of Leo Rogers. And the second in command of the Rogers family. His position in Northampton circles was very high. Equivalent to representing Leo Rogers. Luke and Yo-Yo got along well. It was rumored that they were a couple. In truth, their relationship was not confirmed, but he seemed to be Yo-Yo's best choice for a husband. The Protector Chapter 144 Yo-Yo would not be moved even if a blast from the past returned in the form of the man she idolized. Eons ago. The crux of the matter was that the present Levi was far inferior compared to Luke. 
Seeing Levi today, Yo Yo became more determined than ever to choose Luke. May, Leon, and the others quickly greeted Luke when he arrived. Luke's status was too high, way above theirs. They should try to associate with him more. Yo Yo smiled as she asked Luke, What's wrong, Luke? While you were chatting, you mentioned something taboo to the Rogers family, Luke looked right. And left as he replied. Oh? Taboo. Yo Yo's face turned pale. Luke nodded and said, Who gave the information that the prophets of the Rogers family are related to? Levi's core technology. Do not listen to rumors. The core technology was invented by the Rogers. Family's own technical team. It has nothing to do with Levi. Don't say such things again. It's all right if I hear it, but if any other of the Rogers family members were to hear that, you will get into trouble. I understand. I do understand. May and the others were afraid when they heard this. Yo Yo nodded her head too. The truth was that everyone knew what really happened with the medical technology invention. It must not be said in public, though. Levi heard and understand exactly what was happening. He could only feel upset that the Rogers family members were shameless. Undeniably, they had profited by using his techniques. Yet, no one was allowed to even mention that. It was absolutely shameless. Yo-Yo saw that Luke was accompanied by a dozen bodyguards. In the midst of them, an assistant held a password-protected attaché case. Out of curiosity, she asked, Luke, what are you delivering? Luke laughed as he replied, this is a gift for Kieran. It's priceless, so I need to keep an eye on it. Personally. In an instant, May and the rest became curious. Even Levi's curiosity was piqued. What would the Rogers family give to Kieran, the scoundrel? Yo-Yo laughed, Luke, what's inside there? Can you tell me? Luke whispered, the gift to Kieran is a watch. It is a custom-made Patek Philippe Starry Night model. The only one in the world, worth tens of millions. The crowd gasped in astonishment. Indeed, the Rogers family was truly wealthy to present such a treasure to Kieran as a gift. At the mention of a watch, Levi thought of his good friend, Morris. Rich men generally had the same interests cars, beautiful women, antiques, and the like. Morris loved watches. There were all types of well-known watches in his home, and many of them were limited editions. Of course, they were all gone now. Luke smiled and said, I'll reveal another secret, but you must keep it to yourselves. This watch was owned by the assistant director of Levi Group, Morris. He had it custom-made in the Patek Philippe headquarters. It is the most expensive piece in his collection of thousands of watches. Upon hearing Luke's speech, everyone was surprised and turned to look at Levi. Fury. Levi was furious. It was bad enough that his best buddy's possessions were divided up, but to be used as gifts? It was. Atrocious. All right, you guys must keep this a secret. It's not to be told to anyone else. Luke left with the watch with his bodyguards in tow. Abigail whispered to Levi, Brother-in-law, please don't be angry. If it's given to the Kieran as a gift. Grandpa and I can't do anything about it. Levi said nonchalantly, It doesn't matter as I shall take back the watch soon enough. Ha ha ha. May and the others laughed again. How are you going to get it back? Yo-Yo sneered as she asked him. Do you think you are Kieran, the king of war? The crowd asked him. Levi said softly, when the time comes, Kieran will bring it to me personally. The Protector Chapter 145 You are so disappointing. Yo-Yo shook her head and looked at Levi in disgust. Are you now depending on tall tales to console yourself? May and the others were now taking Levi as a joke. Hansen laughed as he said, Levi, did you see Luke just now? That's Yo-Yo's boyfriend. How can you compare yourself to him? He is more awesome than you were six years ago when you were at your peak. 
Ha ha, yo yo, do you now see what a poor choice you made at that time? Your judgment was really horrible. Now that you have chosen Luke, you just escaped from a great tragedy. Yo yo was still feeling glad. She often imagined Luke's expression of regret, hoping to see it in person one day. And now, her wish had come true. Brother in law, let's leave. Just ignore them. Abigail was so furious that she felt she would kill the two women if she listened to their insults any longer. Listen, you guys, truth be told, he was once at the pinnacle of success. Now, he is still at the peak. With that, Abigail took Levi away from the place. The moment they left the guest hall, they ran into the Rogers family. Leading the group was naturally the domineering Glenn, followed by Anthony, Pamela, and the others. Grandpa, uncles, dad, mom. Abigail greeted them cheerfully. However, Glenn and the clan were looking at Levi. Levi? Ha ha ha. Suddenly, Glenn broke out in laughter. Anthony went to Levi and whispered in his ear, laughing, I promise you that you won't leave this place alive. It was an undisguised threat. Levi laughed as he replied, Why isn't my old classmate, Oswald here? Is he hospitalized and unable to come? Pamela and Bailey Black did not know about it. Immediately, they replied, What nonsense are you talking about, Levi? Oswald is perfectly fine. However, Glenn and the others were disturbed. In fact, they were bursting with fury, ready to kill Levi. He was challenging the power of the Rogers family. Levi continued laughing as he said, Go on with the treatment. Our country, Arudaya, has lots of fine doctors. There's no need to seek any doctors from abroad. With these words, Silence fell on the group. Glenn's countenance looked crazed. Levi knows about the doctor from abroad. Other than the Atkinson family and the people who abducted the doctor, no one knew about this. Everyone looked at Levi with suspicion in their eyes. Can it be possible that Levi orchestrated the abduction of the doctor? How can that be possible? Military helicopters were used, and mercenaries were employed. How can Levi do all that? It is impossible. We have thoroughly checked Levi's present situation. He has few helpers only Nuve, Trey, and some. Others are giving him aid. We can only suspect that he knows about the foreign doctor, that is all. Ho ho ho. Levi laughed mysteriously and left with Abigail. Glenn and the clan were left wondering. Nevertheless, they were certain deep down that Levi only knew about the doctor and was not responsible for the abduction. Just then, a staff of the Rogers family ran over to them and reported, Master, there is a problem with the dinner. We need some help to resolve it. The dinner and the celebration were equally important. Nothing must go wrong. Glenn instructed Pamela and Bailey Black, You both go and resolve the dinner problem. It must go on. Without a snag. Yes, father. The men of the Rogers family must attend the celebration ceremony. Hence, the only person they could send was Pamela. By now, almost all the guests had arrived. Everyone was seated according to their seating arrangement. Due to her relation to Levi, Abigail was seated at the back of the hall, close to the center aisle instead of near the front. The Rogers family would never let Levi sit near the front. May, Yo-Yo, and the others were seated near the front, close to the center. Before they took their seats, they waved to Levi to show him that they had better seats. In a short moment, the guests had filled the few hundred seats. The Protector Chapter 146 The guests were from all walks of life, covering the military, political, and business circles. They were all bigwigs in their respective areas. It was a testament to the Rogers family's wide network and sphere of influence. The empty front row seats were reserved for the ceremony's VIPs, who were usually the last to arrive. Members of the Rogers family had all taken their seats. 
the scene was a perfect representation of the wealthy and powerful being in a class of its own. Roaring cheers could be heard when the celebrities, including Yelda Zamora and Zach Copeland, made their appearances. The enthusiasm of the crowd was pushed to a climax. After the celebrities settled down, Glenn Rogers walked up on stage and said a few words of welcome. Following his opening speech, Glenn said impassionedly, Now, let us welcome our heavyweight guests of the night. I'm proud to say that the following 20 guests whom I'm about to introduce, are all my mens. Throughout my military career. First, let us welcome Stephen Shaw, Colonel of the 1st Regiment of Northampton. Now, let us welcome Yash Warner, Captain of the Kiran Special Operations Force of Northampton. Third, we have Warren Klein, Commander of the Special Warfare Command of West Lake Brown. Fourth, we have Gilbert Hawkins, District Governor of Elswipel in Northampton. Fifth, let's welcome Danny Heath, Northampton's Minister of Commerce. The crowd was exuberant, and everyone clapped loudly as Glenn introduced his former mints. The man's protégés were scattered all over the country, and all of them were at the pinnacle of their lives and careers. Around 20 of them were commanders or held equivalent positions, while at least 50 of them were higher UPS in the military or political circles. Everyone, including the rich and powerful, stood in awe of those former protégés of Glenn. Each of them was a formidable force not to be trifled with. With so many outstanding individuals who were previously under the Rogers family's wing, it was almost impossible to gauge the immeasurable influence of the family. Every member of the Rogers family was proud to be one of the Rogers. Glenn was definitely the proudest person among everyone in attendance as he presented his mints, who were all successes in their own rights. That was what the Rogers family was made of. There was no one in Northampton who would dare to pit themselves against the Rogers family. The dozens of celebrities who attended the event were proof of the Rogers family's wealth, while the high-ranking military and government officials demonstrated the family's vast network. Witnessing the star-studded occasion, Leo Watson sneered and said, Look at this grandeur, Levi is definitely no match for the Rogers family. May and Yo-Yo who were also stunned by the impressive scene, readily agreed. Honestly, the Rogers family could be considered the most powerful family in the country. What we are currently seeing may not even be a fraction of what they are really made of. They are already beyond the level of conventional riches. It seems like they are truly the cream de la cream of the country. I highly doubt that there would be anyone who would get the better of that family. After Stephen Shaw and the remaining guests were seated, the front row seats were almost fully filled. But the center seat was still vacant. Everyone knew very well who that special chair was reserved for. It was none other than the Kieran King of War. In extremely high spirits, Glenn Rogers announced in a bright voice, Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's Give the loudest round of applause to welcome the legendary god of war of Arudaya, one of the five great wars regiment, the Kiran king of war. Clap! 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 The audience responded with thunderous applause. The Rogers family would definitely have their status elevated even further after today, with the Kiran king of war gracing the ceremony. Under the crowd's expectant gazes, Kiran entered the venue flanked by Anthony, Leo, and a few others. Everyone was thrilled to be able to see the Kiran King of War in person. As Abigail had already been in the man's presence previously, she did not feel the same excitement as the rest of the people. Levi smiled and said, Look what a grand welcome Kiran has received. What baffled many was that, Kiran was donning his military uniform. With a dignified and domineering Air surrounding him, the man looked truly majestic and powerful. The other military officers, such as Stephen Shaw, who made their appearances before Kieran, were all dressed in suits. None of them came in their military uniforms. After all, they were attending a private event, 
and it did not seem appropriate to be decked out in military uniforms. As such, it was mystifying to majority of the attendees that the Kiran King of War had donned his uniform. It was as if he was out on a mission instead of attending a joyous ceremony. However, Glenn and the rest did not dwell on it. They even thought that the man's choice of dressing was a great idea, as it made him look more dignified, intimidating, and revered. At the same time, it also showed the rest of the guests that being a part of the event meant serious business for Urkiran. This could only benefit the Rogers family, as it created an illusion that, instead of being specifically invited as a guest, Kieran was already on friendly terms with the family, and had specially come to show support for the event. The Protector Chapter 147 Kieran went up the stage with a stoic face. The Rogers family had prepared a gift for the man and had arranged for it to be presented to him on stage. This moment had come. Members of the Rogers family were all in a state of ecstasy as they looked at Kieran standing on stage in his military uniform. This instant was the highlight of the Rogers family's 40th anniversary celebration. The rest of the guests in the audience had looks of envy on their faces as they witnessed this glorious moment. After today, the Rogers family's status among the wealthy and powerful families was bound to be raised by a few notches. Overwhelmed with excitement, Glenn announced, Next, on behalf of the Rogers family, L would like to present the Kieran King of War a token of appreciation. Escorted by eight bodyguards, Luke Quarrel walked on stage, holding an exquisite gift box in his hands. Look, Yo-Yo. It's your boyfriend, Luke. He must have gained recognition and is extremely trusted by the Rogers family to be entrusted with such an important task. Exactly. He's one of few who get to be in such close contact with the Kieran King of War. That's so impressive. Yet, how can Levi compare to Luke? Hansen Wood and Leo Watson were engaged in an animated conversation, showering Luke Quarrel with compliments. Yo Yo was all smiles and wore a slightly smug expression on her face. Her reaction was equivalent to admitting that Luke was indeed her boyfriend. The woman was also thankful that Levi had previously rejected her. Otherwise, she would not have been able to be a part of such a momentous occasion now. The other people around, who had overheard Hansen and Leo's conversation, had also turned their gazes towards Yo-Yo. They seemed to be also admiring her good fortune. Yo-Yo was enjoying the feeling of being envied by all and derived great satisfaction from it. She even felt like standing up and shouting out loud, Do you guys see that? That man over there who is presenting the gift to the Kieran King of War is my boyfriend. Yo-Yo deliberately turned around to look at Levi. It was as though she was silently conveying a message to the man, telling him that he was not good. Enough for her. Luke went up on stage and stopped next to Kieran. Holding the gift box with both hands, he extended his arms. Glenn did a brief introduction of the gift, saying, This present, which we have specially chosen for the Kieran King of War, was custom made by Patek Philippe. It's one of its kind and worth ten million. We felt that only a unique timepiece like this would suit the King of War's honorable status. Glenn paused and looked at Kieran before continuing, Please don't misunderstand, sir. This is purely a token of appreciation from the Rogers family, to thank you for being here with us on this significant occasion. I can promise, in front of the media and everyone else present, that we have no other intentions. It's just meant to be a souvenir, and we hope that you will accept it. Glenn wanted to avoid unnecessary rumors about the Rogers family attempting to bribe the Kieran King of war and also hoped to ease any concerns which Kieran might have. Open it. When Luke opened the gift box, the exclusive watch sprang into sight. It was indeed a stunning beauty and definitely worth the high value of ten million. With slightly shaky hands, Luke presented the watch to Kieran. 
This could be considered the greatest achievement of Luke's life so far. The audience held their breaths when Kieran accepted the gift. Successive gasps of astonishment could be heard among the other guests. Guests in the front row, who were closest to the stage, even had goosebumps when they took in the sight. They consisted of representatives from other wealthy and powerful families. Even though the acceptance of the watch by Kieran seemed like a simple gesture, it held profound significance. This could mean that the Rogers family would have Kieran's backing from now onward. With this, the Rogers family would dominate the rest of the wealthy and powerful families in North Hampton and might even become one of the most formidable families in the country. Sir, would you like to say a few words? Glenn Rogers asked Kieran tentatively. Kieran suddenly flashed an unfathomable smile and said, Where's Oswald Rogers? I've heard since. Long ago that Mr. Oswald is a rare, unparalleled talent in Northampton. I don't seem to see him here. Today. The hearts of everyone from the Rogers family skipped a beat when they heard Kieran's question. Two people had asked about Oswald today. The first one was Levi Garrison. And now, it was Kieran. What were the odds that two seemingly unrelated people had asked the same question on the same day? That raised question marks for the Rogers. It was almost as though they had discussed it prior and colluded to ask the same question on the same day. The idea was also reinforced by the knowing smile on Kieran's face. However, it was merely a passing thought. Instead of feeling uneasy, the Rogers were actually delighted that the Kieran had asked the question. The Protector Chapter 148 To the Rogers family, being noticed by the Kieran King of War was a blessing to Oswald. Anthony Rogers was more exhilarated than any of his other family members. It was a great honor that his son had received such a flattering compliment from Kieran. Audible whispers could be heard from the crowd. They were all envious of the attention given to the Rogers family by Kieran. Kieran had even made a special mention of the successor of the Rogers family. It was almost unbelievable. Glenn and Anthony shot each other a meaningful look. They were both burning with hatred for Levi Garrison and wished that they could skin him alive at this instant. If Oswald had not been injured by Levi, he would have been able to join the other members of the family at today's ceremony and receive compliments from Kieran in person. It was entirely Levi Garrison's fault. Sir, my grandson is still in the hospital recovering from his injuries. Glenn did not dare to deceive. Kieran and gave a truthful reply. Oh, it's fortunate that he's in the hospital though. At least it's not the crematorium, Kieran said with a wry laugh. Hey. The Rogers family members were puzzled, as they were unable to comprehend the meaning behind the man's words. However, they still laughed along. This way please, sir. Glenn personally ushered Kieran down the stage and to his seat the center seat of the front row. It was the seat reserved for the most important guest of the night. Everyone knew that only the Kieran King of War was deserving of that seat. No one else would dare to claim that seat. Once Kieran stepped off the stage, the other military officers, including Stephen Shaw and Yash Warner. All stood up respectfully and waited for Kieran to take his seat. Besides the military officer's veneration for him, Kieran was also reverenced by a majority of the other guests. With twenty high-ranking officers and the King of War gathered together to celebrate the Rogers family's anniversary, the family was immensely gratified and felt triumphant. Glenn Rogers led Kieran to the seat right at the center which was specially reserved for the man, and said, Sir, please take your seat. We have specially left the best seat in the house for you. No one else would dare to sit here. Please have a seat, sir. Yash Warner said to his commander as well. However, Kieran remained standing at the spot and did not move. He neither sat down nor walked away. He was simply in a daze as he stared at the empty seat. Everyone was at a loss as to what to do or say next, especially the Rogers family. What could Kieran be thinking about? 
it was almost impossible to read the thoughts of a big wheel like the King of War. Glenn was so nervous that his legs turned wobbly. After taking a deep inhale, he plucked up the courage to ask, Sir, is there anything concerning you? Did you just say that this is the best seat in the house? Kieran asked. Even though Glenn was a little puzzled at the man's question, he gave a firm nod and answered, Yes. Indeed. This is the best seat which we have specially arranged for the most important person here. Tonight. Kieran's lips curled into a faint smile as he said, If that's the case, I'm afraid I shouldn't be sitting here. I'm not qualified to take this seat, I can at most only take the one beside it. Everyone was shocked by the King of War's declaration. People were boggled that Kieran had implied that there was someone more important than him. What? Who else would be more worthy than the Kieran King of War? A burst of helpless laughter escaped Glenn's lips as he said, Sir, stop pulling our legs. You are our most prestigious guest of the night, and the only person who's entitled to this seat. However, Kieran shook his head and insisted, No, I'm really not. Hey? Can you please enlighten us then, sir? Who could be a better fit than you for this chair? We really have no idea. Glenn and the rest racked their minds for a potential individual but still could not figure out who else could be on PAR with the Kieran King of War. Kieran smiled and said, The only person who can sit here is not me. It's someone else instead. There's someone else. Glenn was even more confused. Yes, he is the only person who's entitled to this seat. That person I'm referring to is also here with us. Tonight. I've already spotted him. Everyone was intrigued by the someone whom Kieran was being secretive about. There's someone among us who is of a higher status than the King of War. This sudden new revelation caused a great commotion among the crowd. The Protector Chapter 149 Everyone looked around, but they could not find a person who was of a higher status than Kieran. The Rogers family was very puzzled, curious as to who it was. Who is the person you speak of, may I ask? Glenn Rogers questioned. Kieran laughed, he is my master. Master. Kieran's master. Yes. Everyone drew in their breaths. Kieran's master? To everyone, it meant that the person shared the same status as the god of war. Back then, Levi had taught Kieran a lot of valuable skills. Kieran always saw him as his leader and master. No one could understand the relationship they shared. Kieran's master is also here? Why do we not know about this? Glenn, Rogers and the others also broke into a cold sweat. The Rogers family did not even notice such an important figure present at their celebration. This was frightening. If Kieran were to blame the Rogers family, they would not be able to take the social backlash. Glenn asked in a frightened voice, May I ask where your master is? The Rogers family will extend our warmest invitation. Kieran waved his hand. There is no need. I will invite him personally. As soon as Kieran took a step, all the senior officials of the Rogers family followed suit, along with Stephen Shaw, Yash Warner and the rest of the distinguished guests. Thousands of people looked at Kieran and the group of people behind him. Everyone was curious about the identity of Kieran's master. Kieran arrived at the center aisle. He passed the front row and walked straight towards the back. The first row was eliminated. Everyone in the middle and back rows began to feel agitated as they looked at each other. May, Yo-Yo and the others were especially agitated. May asked in doubt, who can this person be? Yo-Yo shook her head. Such an important figure is probably hiding in the corner. Very soon, Kieran and the others walked past them. This made May and Yo-Yo extremely disappointed. Everyone wished that they could join Kieran and his group of people. Their small clique got up immediately and looked towards the back row. They really wanted to know who the mysterious person was. Everyone present was excited to find out. Levi was the only one who remained in his seat, looking stoic. 
Abigail witnessed his impassiveness and joked, Brother-in-law, could it be you? Levi responded, Yes, you guessed right. However, Abigail thought that Levi was just joking. In the next moment, Kieran's group cleared the middle row and walked towards the back row. A commotion broke out in the back row as people stood up immediately. The Rogers family felt really nervous at the sight of this. They had actually arranged for Kieran's master to sit in the back row. The thought of it scared them. The Rogers family's reputation was about to be ruined. They reached the back row. Glenn cast a sweeping glance over the guests. There was no one he recognized apart from his granddaughter, Abigail, and Levi, the person he was going to kill in a while. There was no one else he could recognize. Anthony and Leo also felt the same way. The people in the back row were barely allowed to join the celebration. To the Rogers family, these people were not required to be there. There was really no one else they could recognize. However, Kieran's master was in the crowd. Everyone grew anxious because the answer to their burning question was going to be revealed soon. Abigail's heart leaped to her throat as Kieran approached them. Kieran stopped in his tracks all of a sudden. Everyone held their breaths. What was even more freakish was that Kieran happened to stop at the row where Levi and Abigail were. In. Abigail felt as though she had won the lottery. Is he actually in this row? She looked intensely at Levi. The Protector Chapter 150 Is his master really my brother-in-law? She thought Levi was just pulling her leg. Yo-Yo and May too noticed that Kieran had stopped at Levi's row this row and whispered among themselves, isn't it such a coincidence? At the sight of Kieran, the person at the end of the row felt so pressured that he immediately stood up and left his seat. The others in the row also followed suit. This was because they clearly knew that they were not Kieran's master, so they had to leave in order to make way. Tens of people left the row quickly and lined the aisle. The only people left in the row were Levi and Abigail. Levi sat there, as calm and steady as he could be. Abigail stood up and looked at her surroundings. She did not know if she should sit or stand and was it. A loss. She wanted to leave, but Levi was still in his seat, so she did not know what to do. Oh my God! Is Kieran's master really my brother-in-law? In an instant, a thousand pairs of eyes riveted on them. Levi and Abigail were the center of attention. Overwhelmed with anxiety, Abigail became breathless. Time seemed to come to a standstill at this moment. Everyone was lost in their thoughts, and their minds became a complete blank. Abigail's teeth chattered, and her limbs trembled in fear. She really wanted to ask Levi, but she did not have the strength to open her mouth. This man is too mysterious. Kieran started to move, his shoes creating a rhythmic beat on the carpet. As if a sledgehammer had slammed into their hearts, the sound brought everyone back to their senses. They saw that Abigail and Levi were the only ones left in the row. Everyone figured out what that meant. Abigail is a woman, so she definitely cannot be Kieran's master. There is only Levi left. He is Kieran's master. Glenn and the others, who were following behind Kieran, could not respond to this piece of information. They were reeling from the shock. Every one of them felt like walking corpses as they stood rooted to their spot, mouths gaping. They could not react. They could not react at all. This was because they did not expect such a thing to happen at all. Levi being Kieran's master would be their worst nightmare come true. Yo-Yo, May, and Leon Watson looked on as Kieran moved. They saw that only Levi was seated there. Their scalps grew numb as blood rushed to their heads. It felt as though their heads were about to explode. He is Kieran's master? Impossible. Absolutely not. Levi's ability and reputation had deteriorated, and he was no more than a waste of space. So how could he be Kieran's master? Even the Levi from six years ago did not have the right to be acquainted with Kieran. How was he able to become a military big shot after being in prison for six years? 
Everyone who knew Levi thought of him this way. If this was real, then it meant that the Rogers family was going to face a major disaster. It only took a short while to reach Levi, but to the audience, it felt like a century. Kieran finally made his way towards Levi and stood in front of him. Abigail, who was at such close proximity to Kieran, almost fainted on the spot. Everyone saw Kieran looking respectfully at Levi. After doing a military salute, he boomed, God of War, Kieran of Northwest War Zone is here to report to you. After listening to what Kieran had said, everyone felt as though tons of explosives had gone off in the room, pulverizing their bodies and shattering their souls. The God of War that Kieran mentioned could only be one person the one right at the top. Is the God of War here to grace the Rogers family's 40th anniversary celebration? Everyone was deathly silent. No one said a word. However, their hearts were beating loudly in their ears.